Okay, just taking a couple of minutes and I'll get started. Okay, well, uh, I wasn't meant to go to the screen yet, I was going to edit it, but whatever, you know what. Let's get started. It is Wednesday, the 11th of April uh, 2018, and I'm going to go live again once again with you for the Shin Han Tank Pro League. I'm going to take it a little bit easier today on my voice, just because uh, my voice is feeling a bit weird, and I don't want to sort of damage my voice or anything by screaming too much. But you know what? Today wasn't a bad day, so let's get into it pretty quickly. There's no point in hanging around. There's not really too much to um, introduce at the beginning today. Uh, obviously, I did do a cast yesterday, which is why I need to take it a little bit easier on my voice. But other than that, it should be good. Looks like we have a, a couple of people tuned in already, so thank you very much. Okay, let's head on over to basically introduce the maps for the first match, and of course what the teams are going to be as well. So let's have a look. First of all, I'm going to change the order a little bit of how I do this, just because I want to show you what teams are going to be playing first. And as you can see in game one, it's going to be DM versus SK Bravo. DM have won one, lost one so far overall. Uh, SK Bravo haven't fared as well uh, going north for two, but they have... They have won a couple of games, but not really doing too well so far. And this is going to be their redemption match, if they do want to go for it. They have to obviously uh, fight pretty hard for it, but I think they can. Uh, they're certainly not to be counted out just yet, I would say. Still a long way to go in round one. This is week three. There are four more weeks after this. So they have a lot of chances to come back and fight their way to the top of the group. But um, the maps they're going to be playing on today is going to be as follows. Much like the cache yesterday, uh, we're going to have Gladiator as the first map, Polaris Rhapsody as the second map, Grand Line Essie as the third map, Neo Moonglaive, and Judgment Day as the final ace map. And of course, as always, the matches for today in this case is going to be a PvZ between Magician and Tech on Gladiator. Uh, Cruzago and Haven will be battling it out in a PvZ on Polaris Rhapsody. Torsan and Kitty will be uh, playing against each other in a TVT, uh, which will be the first TVT in the tournament so far on Grand 9 SE. And, uh, I mean, finally, apart from the East match, of course, we will have White versus Old Man Slum. Should be pretty fun, that's another PvZ. So this matchup has a lot of PvZ in it, guys, so I hope, hope you love Protoss and Zerg. Uh, but here we go, let's have a quick look at the table as it stands, so as I said before, it's not exactly, uh, it, it's not exactly in order, but as you can see, steaming away at the top of the table, you do have SK Alpha, they have won all three of their games so far, uh, DM will be looking to uh, try and gain their lead up today. And unfortunately, you do have SK Bravo and Ash, along with Sai, all losing their games, uh, unfortunately, overall. So, a little bit of misordering, but still, you can see there's some pull-away teams already. But of course, all is still to play for. This is just round one. And uh, I'm going to make a big post on this later at some point, just explaining the entire format, because I think I've not really made it as clear as I wanted to. Uh, but here we go. Let's actually head on to have a look at who the first players are going to be. As I mentioned before, it's going to be Tech and Magician. 
a PVZ tech playing incredibly well for his team so far, has won two out of three of his games, 66% win rate. Magician not faring too well, uh, but this is going to be his revenge match here. He's going to try and get a win. He wants to get his name on the table. He doesn't want to go down as uh, one of the lower players on his team, so there's certainly a lot to play for in this game. Tech, uh, one of the better players in the tournament results-wise at the moment. Uh, he did have one ace appearance as well. I'm thinking about adding that onto the uh, onto the screen if I can, just so we can sort of have a look at who the most dependable players are. But I'm probably going to be making a few changes uh, between round one and round two. Not too much, like, during the tournament. But the first map, just to go straight into it, is going to be on Gladiator. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Gladiator, of course, the first map this week. PVZ so far. Showing to be pretty good, so, uh, well, on this map at least. Zerg faring a little bit better at the moment, but there's been some pretty crazy games, and I'm almost certain this game will not be any different. So I am just very quickly gonna throw up the intro, and then we will get straight into the first game. Hey guys, and as I said, we're going to get straight into the first game. I have everything loaded up already today, and let's get started. Now, Brood War is being a pain. There we go. Let's actually get that to show up as well. <laughs> kind of need that to cast. Glad I checked. Um, but going to be pretty cool this game. It's going to be with starting off in the bottom left position. Okay, it started with the pause, but we don't have to sit and watch that. Uh, it's going to be fighting for SK Bravo. It's going to be Magician. And his opponent starting in the top right position is going to be the Blue Protoss fighting for DM. It's going to be Tech. Now, if this is the first time you've tuned into any of the STPL, every single match between the teams is going to be a best of five. So uh, there's a best of one between each player. So it's a best of five, best of ones as such. And every game counts towards the overall victory table at the end. Uh, I'm still trying to work out exactly how I want to rank that, but it is going to be based around uh, be it match wins or game wins individually, I think. Uh, I think I need to figure that out and put it all in the thread and also on Discord just so all the teams understand everything. The game speed is not on slowest. It's on fastest. It's on fa like I can put it to times two if you want, but you know what? You don't want that, so... There we go, we're going to have a gateway expand coming up for tech. Uh, I was going to mention that before, but got a little bit distracted. Now, as I said, I'm going to try and take it a little bit easier on my voice today. I've been on the phone quite a lot of work today, and uh, I did cast yesterday, so I've not really had the rest day like I uh, normally plan to do in between, which is why I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I did have to delay Monday stream, unfortunately, so we do have... A hatchery coming up for Magician with the pool behind that. That's actually a 12 hatch. Very, very ballsy these days. Uh, mainly because of cannon rushes and everything. And also gateway expands pretty good against it. But spawning pool on 12, oh, on 13, I believe. So uh, pretty good there for him. And looks like the probe is going to find the Zerg opponent fairly shortly. Luckily enough for Magician, there isn't going to be any cannons in place. So he's not really going to be able to, um, to cannon rush, of course. This map, not as good for cannon rushes, very hard to fit any cannons behind any minerals anywhere. Uh, you could possibly do it in the main, uh, maybe in the bottom corner, but even then it's not really worth it. And going to be a little bit annoying. <laughs> I might, might lose my yard time. Oh man. It'll be harsh. 
Uh, but yeah, here we go. We're going to have an Exus coming up for tech, so it is going to be a gateway expand. <coughs> and to show you how uh, how bad my voice is, I'm already losing my voice, and I've only just started casting, so... I really do need to take it easy, maybe just talk as if I'm talking normally, not go too hyped today, although I probably will do anyway, just because that's how I cast and I can't really stop it. Apparently it's to do with something about how when I get excited, rather than going faster, I just make my voice slightly higher pitched, which um, which doesn't really help my voice box. <laughs> but you know what, hopefully the game's going to be pretty fun anyway. Uh, looks like we do have the third base coming up, but add the other natural for the uh, Zerg player. Now of course, due to the fact they did spawn cross, there isn't really a good expansion for him to take, which is far away from the uh, Protoss player. Of course you could maybe take another main uh, but the benefit of doing this is you will gain control of this ramp and will be able to get hold of another natural here. Uh, looks like the probe, oh sorry I completely missed this, looks like the zealot has taken out one drone and three zerglings, looks like there's a second zealot in here as well. Uh, looks like I need to uh, keep an eye on the minimap again, too busy moaning about my voice but here we go, layer on the way as well, that's going to be three hatch layer. This zergling should be able to take down the zealot, pretty good job but here comes another zealot again. Gonna get behind the minerals, gonna trade very, very efficiently. Should be able to get at least four links here, I would say, uh, if he controls this well enough. And it looks like a Magician's not really going to be going for any form of... Oh, nearly lost my glass of water everywhere. I think yeah, pretty good here. Okay, so we do have the second base now up. Another Zealot is actually zooming in, getting at one Zealot, but, or getting at one Zergling. Well, this immediately surrounded the, uh, the, I believe this is like the fifth zealot, is going to stay back at home. He knows he can't be too aggressive. There are going to be some lings out on the map and uh, not really too much else to say there. Looks like he will start droning up at all of his bases. He has dealt with a very, very early zealot aggression. And of course, with the amount of lings he was forced to make to defend against that. Um, yeah, this... As uh, I don't have to point it out, this isn't the best of walls, and this could come back and really hurt him. But hopefully, it's not going to end like that. That would be a very, very anticlimactic game. Uh, Tech has been doing a pretty good job with his aggression, killed at least two drones at about ten links overall. Uh, that a lot of uh, that's about five lava worth of what could have been drones. So very, very important. Going to delay the Zerg's economy quite significantly. And now we do have a spire coming up as well. This is going to likely be to build some scout, uh, to build some scouts, uh, to build some uh, scourge, or as Shamtu says, I think it is scourge. Wait, who is it? Oh, wait, no. Is it Artosis that I heard say scourge? I can't remember. Either way, there's someone who calls this scourge, and it makes me laugh. But um, gonna be scourge. Most likely, of course, mutless play can be very strong on this map. There's a lot of really nice places you can fly in. Uh, but with the Protoss going for Corsairs, he's going to be able to get a good scout off on this. Uh, getting plus one attack as well. Possibly going to head into DTs behind this. This is a really, really good way of going Corsair DT. You get that plus one to kill the Overlords incredibly quickly. And then you push him with the DTs. But here we go, four Zealots coming in. And this... Is, oh, it's Day 9, thank you. And it's going to be a... Um, going to be a drone massacre. The drone's actually transferring over to the other base. Going to make it a little bit more obvious that there is... Oh, of course the probe did actually just scout this as well. Uh, but here we go. Uh, Zealot's going to scout the Spire. No even no real need to send the uh, Corsair over there to scout this, but this is going to be a very, very nice engagement for Tech to be taking here. There's a lot of lings, but there should be enough Zealots to actually do decently up against this, but no! Really nice drone drill. Going to push the Zealots out the way. And gonna mitigate a lot of the damage there. So really, really nicely done by our Zerg player there. Looks like we're gonna have Tech moving in. Some more Zealots gonna go down pretty much immediately to the uh, Zergling. So really nice um, positioning on those. But here we go. This is the money moment. He goes behind this uh, this area here. Gonna hide behind the overlay just so we can't really see it. And that's gonna be a bit of a pain. But here we go. Uh, Corsairs coming in, they're going to be able to take down some of these overlords. Let's see if there is a Templar Archives on the way. I think there will be fairly shortly. There is a Citadel. Uh, there's actually an idle probe at the top of his base, which is kind of interesting, but here we go. The Zealot actually moving back out. It killed all of the Lings. Gonna get a drone as well, so really, really nicely done by Tech once again. And due to all the Corsairs, Magician is heavily, heavily supply blocked right now. 
He's going to try and chase down the uh, chase down the Corsairs with the Scourge. Not really going to be able to get too much. There is going to be a cannon in the main just about to finish up, so he's probably going to go down. Uh, we'll get a scout off, though. That's uh, pretty good for him. Now, this probe's still sitting a little bit idle. Of course, he's been doing a lot of job, a lot of work. Microing his Corsairs around, microing his Zealots. So, leaving idle probes is a fairly... It's not a great thing to do, but it's fairly uh, understandable, I would say. There's a lot to worry about in Brood War. He technically does have about 170 APM, so... Not the highest APM Protoss player I've ever seen. I mean, when you look at BCU, it's like 400 APM, like, at all parts of the game. And when you watch his stream, it's... You know what? When you watch a stream, it's really, really bad. And, uh... Oh, yeah, it's really, really hard to follow, because he's just doing so much all the time. Uh, looks like the Zerg player is going to try and turtle up a bit. Going to add a lot of Sunkens and spores, most well, like one spore to each of his bases, most likely. Just to help defend against the Corsairs, the Corsair count does sit at 4 at the moment. Going to make it a little bit more annoying for the Zerg player to try and keep his Overlords alive. There's actually no defense against the Corsairs here. So if the Corsairs did manage to fly into this third base, they could get another 3 Overlords for free. And that would be incredibly good for him. But looks like he is just planning... He's actually adding on some cannons. I think he's a little bit worried about some kind of counterattack. We do have some uh, Corsairs just completely circling past the Scourge. And there are a couple of Scourge here with a single Hydra. that's going to be able to defend against the Corsairs a little bit, but not very much. That is five Corsairs now. Is he going to add a sixth? Yes, he is. We do have Templar Archives done. Uh, there's likely going to be some DTs added on. Yeah, there we go. We've also got some High Templars as well. And it looks like finally plus one should be nearly finished. Yep, so plus one's nearly finished. He's actually pushing in a bit of an anti-timing here, but knowing the fact he does have quite a lot of units means he can actually bust in here, I believe. Uh, but going to think a little bit different of it. Uh, purely on the basis that he wants to make sure... Um, Wants to make sure he doesn't lose his zealots for free. Uh, there is, of course, quite a lot of links here. He's going for plus one carapace first with his evolution chamber as well. So no hydra, uh, hydra attack or anything. I think he should have his hydra upgrades coming along the way. But this could be a pretty big link counter attack here. And this could do a decent amount of damage. He could at least try and get through this wall and get some of the high templar. But it looks like he's thought a bit better of it. Finally, we do actually have Lurkers on the field, and here we go. The Corsairs are going to have free reign for the time being over these Overlords. Just look how quickly the Overlords are dying, and once again, Magician finds himself completely supply-blocked, and these Lings are going to be caught out in the middle of the map as well if he's not careful. The Scourge going in, though, getting some nice connections, not killing anything from what I can see. He has done a lot of damage to at least two of these Corsairs, though. And that is going to be really annoying. Looks like he tried to turn around and deal with it, but does lose a course there. Pretty unfortunate for him. We do have the Zealots. A single DT in the High Templar trying to push up onto this little pizza wedge. Going to be able to take his third base. And Tech is going to be feeling very, very good about this game. There's uh, not really too much you can say, but here we go. A Lurker actually running in, going to try and borrow, but there is an Observer here already, so that's very, very early for a uh, tech to be actually coming in. They're going to be allowed to do that, but does lose a single... I think that was the DT that actually went down there, but here we go. The Lurker's trying to be a little bit more aggressive. They're going to run in between the cannons and the units, but I don't think he realizes there's an Observer here, and this is going to cause him to lose... Three of the only units he actually has. I mean, if we look back at his bases, he doesn't really have any aggressive units whatsoever. He has a Lurker hiding here. Didn't really get any damage done. I think he was trying to catch this probe transfer. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty bad for Magician. Tech is looking like he's going to take a very, very quick fourth base. He has five, six gateways now. He has all of his tech coming into play. And he has such a big army right now. He could actually just push in. Looks like the Corsair is going to come in trying to take out some of the extra overlords again. Uh, there is still five Corsairs, but that's not going to be enough to deal with this many. Uh, one Carapace Scourge, actually. So he's going to have to retreat. Would be interested to see if he adds some more on, but looks like he is just going to 
really focus on his gateway units. He's adding a lot of Dragoons on now. He's got a lot of Zealots. He does know there is Lurkers in play, so you do need those Dragoons to really help out in those engagements. And, I mean, this is going to go into a little bit of a... Not a stale game, but uh, not really too much is going to happen, at least for the time being. Tech, finally, though, is looking to do some damage, and this could be the push that actually ends the game. There is not really all that much left alive for Tech at this base. He does have three Lurkers and two Sunkens, and he, of course, does have his wall. He's trying to actually build some drones right now. That's a bit greedy. Uh, this, this hatchery is 100% going to go down. Is there even anything that can actually reinforce this from the other side? Looks like the... Zergling's actually getting caught out, going to be pulled into the link, so we shouldn't actually have any Hive Tech on the way or anything. Uh, so this push is looking really, really deadly. There's absolutely nothing that can contest just the sheer size of Tech's army here. I mean, this this army is probably about the same amount of supply as Magician's got overall. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty dangerous. Looks like he's going to try and add some more um, Sunkens in the back, but it's probably not going to be enough. He's going to lose his Hydralist then. Looks like we do have some links moving in from behind. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not really going to do too much. I'm actually going to check. I'm definitely on fastest, and I am. Uh, we do have an extra an extra thing coming in. Looks like two of the Corsairs have actually gone down. And another one has gone down, but here we go. The Storm does come in. The other two Corsairs go down as well. And if, uh, if Magician can actually hold on and get enough units to really push in, or push back against Tech. He may be able to do a really good job here, but I don't think he is. It looks like Tech has pulled the trigger. He's going to move in. There are links and Lurkers coming in from behind. They're going to do a pretty decent job. They do not have Adrenaline yet, but it will force Magician's army... Sorry. Tech's army back for the time being. But no, here we go. The units on uh, units from behind have actually died. The Sunkens are pretty much all dead. Only three Lurkers do remain to try and hold this base. Uh, but it looks like Tech is not willing to actually push in. He's going to get his fourth base up. He has cannons here as well. Looks like he may even think about taking a fifth base. So that's a DT actually. Uh, so that DT is going to make sure there's no hidden base or anything. Of course he does now know uh, that Magician is at least on three base. He hasn't seen the fourth base coming up just yet. But this shot will, will most likely lead to the death of that base. That's going to be three DTs dropping into the base. A big, big army heading over. And this base is 100% going to go down. He is not going to be able to get anything here to defend this. I don't even think he has enough units to kill three DTs right now. And here we go. Looks like Tech going to push in to the front. We should have the hatchery going down in just a second. And it looks like that is going to go down. Zealots on top of the units. Dragoons on top of the lurkers as well. And this is going to be a huge, huge engagement. Looks like we do have more and more units coming in from the back though. It is pretty much a purely Dragoon army at the back. And Lings are very, very good against Dragoons. Looks like we may actually have Adrenaline in play. We finally must have the Hive up. Uh, but that was a very, very nice storm. Lurkers on top. Actually storming his own Dragoons. Doesn't really matter too much. There's going to be three DTs here as well. And GG. Magician gets, uh, gets taken out here by Tech in the first game. Uh, let's actually just go to the camera view. I'm just going to check um, check thingy here. Oh, okay. So one of DM's players has changed. So luckily enough, they let me know just before. So, um, wait, hold on. Did he say that before? Oh, he didn't. Okay. So that's, uh, that's my fault. I think I must have set the overlay up slightly different. But you know what? That was a pretty good game there. Uh, I'm just going to get ready to set up the next replay and everything, and then we can get going with the next game. Should be a lot of fun. As you can see, I've got my glass of water directly in front of me today. Trying to do a good job of keeping my uh, voice hydrated and everything, just to make sure I don't overdo it. Of course, we'll have a day off tomorrow, so that's going to feel pretty good. Although I do really, really enjoy casting. It's a lot of fun, so I don't, uh, I don't hate this whatsoever. Okay, what I'm going to do, guys, is I am going to bring up the intro while I set up the next part of the overlay, and we are going to get into the next game, which is going to be Gambito versus Haven. So please do enjoy, and I'll see you guys in a moment.
Okay, so <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed that intro there, guys. I am just quickly setting everything up for the next game. Hopefully I shouldn't take too much longer, just setting the colors and everything like that. Then we can get back into the overlay, have a look at who the players are going to be, see what their stats are like, and have a look at the map. And as I said before, uh, it should be a pretty fun game. So let's actually just set that and this and then we should be good to go so let's actually head on to the overlay have a look at who the players are going to be and let's have a look at the map as well so here we go okay so as you can see this time we have gambito versus haven it is going to be a pvc uh, now unlike the last game uh, gambito hasn't fared as well in the tournament so far has lost both of his games Meanwhile, Haven did get one of the only wins for his team so far. So Haven showing he's a pretty strong Zerg player, and it'll be really interesting to see if he can bring that to this game. If he can bring back uh, SK Bravo in the series, of course, it is only 1-0 towards uh, our... You know what, I'm not going to say where the team are from because I can't remember. But towards DM, I know where a few other players are from, but I don't want to make any judgments. So let's actually see what map they're going to be playing on. They are going to be playing on uh, Polaris Rhapsody. Now, Polaris Rhapsody, one of my favorite two-player maps. Very, very interesting map features. Going to have a spawn at 10 o'clock and at 5 o'clock. It is uh, obviously two-player. You have these double gas spaces in the top right and the bottom left. Uh, some really cool high ground pods that sort of split the two side bases away from everything. And uh, a lot of sort of little narrow ch uh, chokeways, which are pretty good for a lot of the races to abuse, actually. So it should be cool how both of them actually play. And let's get into the next game. I uh, just want to make sure everything is ready. And I believe it is. So let's get going. Okay, so hopefully this time the game will actually show straight away. I don't want to have to fiddle about with it, but there we go. Let me just quickly update the positions on the overlay, because I didn't actually swap that over. I'll just have to quickly put the um, colors in again. But that should only take me just a second, then I can introduce the players. There we go. So starting us off, fighting for SK Bravo, it is going to be... SK's Haven in the top left corner. And starting us off in the bottom right, it's going to be his opponent fighting for DM, trying to get the second win in the series for them and get them uh, get them a, a second win to take them up 2-1, or take them up 2-0 in the series, should I say. It's going to be Gambito, who looks like he's going to be going for a Forge Fast Expand here. Okay, it looks like we are going to have a gas trick here. Oh, man. Oh, I love my friends. They're great. I'm going to go on DND, though. Okay, so... Uh... Oh, that's why I leave myself on DND all the time. But okay, so we do have... It looks like a gas trick. Uh, possibly going to be for a 10 pool. Possibly an 11 hatch. No, it is going to be a 10 pool. He's going to build it in a way... That will actually make his gas mining a little bit more efficient as well. So pretty good for him. Uh, looks like the probe's going to scout this though. So he's going to know exactly what's going on. Forge coming up as well. Uh, kind of an interesting wall so far. I'm not really sure how good this is in comparison to the uh, other Protoss versus Oak walls you can do on here. Uh, but it looks like we're going to have Gambito just trying to be as annoying as possible. Do what he can to block the hatchery as soon as possible. <laughs> Oh my god, Abby. <laughs> You're such a bully, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, but here we go. Looks like Haven. Gonna be trying to get this uh, get this Nexus up really quickly, but using that pylon just to be a little bit more annoying than needs to be. It does take a long time for a drone to kill this pylon. Um, he's probably gonna cancel it before it finishes, just because he does know there is a pull-up, and um, he's not really gonna be able to do too much. Actually adding a cannon straight away, uh, gonna go cannon before Nexus, not gonna play greedy, knows that pool is gonna be a big possibility that it could do a lot of damage. And this probe has retreated with most of its well, very little health, but most of its shield now. And he is gonna be feel or he's gonna feel pretty good about the uh work he's done, and he's even gonna build the Nexus. 
and go straight back out to build the gateway. This probe is a complete trooper. Doing everything you need to do this game. Looks like we'll have some lings on the way to the other base. <laughs> oh, Cadenzi, you're funny. Was it, um... Was it you who they said was casting with Bisu Dagger and you'd never casted them before? Because that was kind of funny. Uh, but it looks like we'll have the probe trying to run out. I mean, this is such a low health probe. The fact he even sent it back out is kind of in, uh, like entertaining to me. But it looks like he's a little bit worried about the uh, Zerglings getting into his base. He is going to pull a couple of probes just to wall this off. Uh, but little does he know that there is going to be a third hatchery on the way for Haven right now and Haven is going to be feel pretty good about his situation he hasn't had to build too many links uh, gonna use them to sort of scout around try and block any probes getting out he doesn't actually manage to get this one though uh, will speed finish in time to allow him to catch it kind of interested in where these zerglings are going maybe he wants to try and cut the probe off at the front uh, looks like the probe did actually delay itself slightly uh, so it looks like they are going to go for the interception I'm not sure they're going to be able to do it but of course this is a little bit quicker. I'm not sure if he thinks the uh, probe's in his base already, but uh, maybe he's just going to go and block the ramp. There we go. It uh, looks like he's going to try and be clever. It looks like we do actually have a second probe on the way. Uh, so I'm not sure if he's trying to do something sneaky or if he has just sent two probes by accident. I mean, this would be incredibly impressive. Is he going to go for a cannon here? You can actually build a pile on here and a cannon here. And then a cannon there as well would be really, really good. But looks like he's not going to go for that. I think he actually sent two probes by accident. Uh, possibly a miss rally there on his Nexus. Going to send one home. Going to leave one to scout. Interestingly, he's not gone to check for the 12 o'clock base. But gets a drone. Really, really nicely done. Two of the drones pulled off of mining for a little bit. And that's pretty good for Gambi too. Any, uh, of course, he did lose the mining, uh, mining time off the other probe. Uh, but I'd say that was worth it in the end. He does manage to get one of the probes, and uh, pretty cool. Oh my god, calling him a little dagger. That's funny. Uh, but there we go, we have the Stargate coming up in the main of Gambito. Nothing too crazy going on. Uh, looks like we're going to have a fairly straightforward build here. Gambito not going for plus one air just yet, uh, unlike Tech. Tech did, in fact, go for that plus one air there. Uh, looks like the probe has actually gone down in the base. I think I just missed that. Uh, one of the Zerglings should have got it. Wait. Oh, there's a Zealot in here. Okay. My bad. I'm very bad at seeing white on the minimap. But here we go. Looks like the Zealot's getting it caught. Only getting one kill. Uh, looks like that was actually a Zergling kill as well. Uh, no drone blood anywhere or anything like that. But he will get a good scout. We'll see that there's no... Uh, no lair coming up, and he will see the evolution chamber. Uh, but with this third base, Haven going to be feeling pretty good about himself. Uh, we do have a probe possibly looking to go out to build a third base for Gambito, possibly just for another scout. And it uh, looks like the uh, PVZ wall so far not been uh, the greatest, as pointed out by Kanenzi and Nerota last time. There are actually really, really good PVZ walls you can do on this map. I think you build a forge here, gateway on top, and then like another pile line, create a semi-type wall. Uh, but this probe going to be kind of annoying. Just going to scout around. Looks like we should have the Hydralist then coming up very shortly. There we go. It is actually at the front of the base. Uh, it's going to be four hatch layer with the Hydralist then. We don't actually see a fifth hatchery as of yet, but that should be coming up fairly shortly. He is stockpiling a lot of minerals right now. Uh, first Corsair is going to be out in the field. Uh, one cool thing I do like about this is he's not going to scout for any overlords near his main, or that for some reason Haven hasn't sent an overlord to the other side of the map. He's been very, very conservative, possibly uh, worried about losing a lot of his overlords like his teammate just did. Uh, his teammate, of course, was just Magician in that last game. Uh, maybe he just wants to make sure that um, everything is safe and secure. Of course, this Corsair can't really do too much. It's going to scout, it's going to find this third base, going to find the fifth hatchery as well. And that is going to be an important thing for him to see. Meanwhile, what tech do we have coming up? Is it going to be a citadel? Is it going to be a robo? I get the feeling it's going to be a citadel. And it, yes, it was. The citadel was there. I'm an idiot. I can, like this, this menu at the bottom is really annoying. But Templar Archives coming in. Not going to be Ser Reva. Ser Reva not exactly that strong on this map. But you can build a really nice wall here. Take a third gas. And of course, you do have the... Double gas in the bottom left with the very small ramp and that small wall you can actually defend with the Reavers. So you know what, maybe Corsair Reaver isn't too bad on this. Uh, 
and uh, looks like we are going to see some creep colonies coming up. Nothing too exciting going on right now. Uh, possibly going to see some DT action, but due to the lack of plus one air on the Corsairs, I think uh, we're more than likely going to see Storm first. Just to make sure he doesn't die to any Hydralis push, uh, Hydralis pressure and Hydralis pushes. Looks like we're going to have the 6th hatchery on the way as well. Hive actually coming up immediately. Uh, so going straight Hive, kind of an interesting uh, build choice here. I mean, he does have the option of getting that top right base, of course, as I said before. It actually has two full gases. Uh, well, I guess the two half gases, 2,500. Most full gas of 5,000. Uh, but they are going to be the most gas-rich bases on the map. It's going to be very, very difficult. If he does get some lurkers for uh, Gambito to really push into them. And Haven is setting himself up in a very, very strong position here. Now, Gambito does have a lot of zealots. And due to the fact he is going to be taking this mineral only, uh, he's going to be able to get a lot more zealots as well uh, very quickly. Looks like we are going to have a fairly zealot-based army here. Do we actually have plus one in play? Uh, yes, we do. Plus one is finished. There's going to be an Archon morphed in as well, just to make sure he can be a little bit more efficient against any sort of massling engagements. And also, uh, the Archons are really good at basically everything in uh, PvC. Uh, they take a lot of damage to kill, and they do a lot of splash as well. Looks like Gambito only stopped at one Corsair. He knows he doesn't need to build too many. Uh, he knows that there isn't a Spire or anything in play, so the one Corsair going to do wonders for him. He's going to actually... Gambito's going to push in now, though. I think he thinks he has enough to break this. Does he, though? Let's say there is a lot of Zealots, and they're doing a lot of damage here. There is going to be a Storm available on this High Templar, and there's going to be a lot of stacked uh, Pydalus here. No dodges on the way there. This could be a very, very strong push, of course. There is a lot of Sunkens left alive, but Haven may have found himself getting a little bit caught off guard. Gambito has a lot of units right now. And he's pushing in. Haven cannot rebuild any units now. He's losing his drones to the Archon. Nine kills on the Archon right now, which is huge. Eleven kills. And this is so much damage for Haven to be taking. He can't rebuild his units. He's going to lose his Hydralist then. And it looks like this very, very quick Hive, or six hatch Hive, is getting completely punished. He's 60 supply behind. And somehow he's trying to hold on. Doing anything he can, but this is such a big deal. Looks like the natural hatchery is going to go down as well. A storm goes down on the only lurker. Hydralist Den is down. The natural hatchery is down. And Haven is hanging on with his dear life. Looks like he's actually added on five sunken colonies. But it doesn't matter defending a mineral only base when you lose your second gas and your natural with two of the hatcheries there as well. And looks like we're going to have yet another Archon. 20 kills was not enough. He wants some more. <laughs> Uh, that's why he's going to morph in this extra Archon, and he's going to look to push up the ramp to end the game here. And Haven is going to need a miracle to hold this. He's doing the best he can. High ground advantage coming into effect on the Zerglings there for the melee attacks. Nice Storm Dodge as well. But I believe there's just far too much Protoss up in this base now. And I don't really think Haven's going to be able to hold on. He's not added any Sunkens in his main. He's low on drones. He's low on money. Uh, but here we go, there is actually a round of links coming in from behind, but it's not going to be enough. GG! And uh, Gambito is going to take a quick 2-0 victory. Uh, or a quick 2-0 lead in the series. It's not a victory in the series just yet. Now, unfortunately, uh, the third game in this series was a walkover. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not, I can't obviously cast it, but I'm not going to see what the results are. We're going to go into game four, and then I'll do the walkover sort of as the fourth game, and we can do it from there. But if I quickly bring us back over to the camera, of course, uh, I mean, uh, Haven did a pretty good job there. It wasn't quite enough, unfortunately, for him, uh, but he did put a lot of effort in there. So unfortunately, we're not going to get a TVT today. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate. I was just having a look at the chat, see if I've missed anything important. But the next game we're going to see is going to be Game 4 of the series, because Game 3 was a walkover. Uh, I don't want to spoil the results of that. I'd rather just cast the third game, and then uh, I can reveal the result of the walkover after this. And then, well, after this, and then we can see if we're going into an ace match or not. But I'm going to load up the next replay, going to set up the overlay for the next game, and let us head back into the intro, and I will see you guys very soon.
Okay, let's quickly head into the overlay and we can have a look at what map's coming up and the players, of course. I know I just mentioned their names just before, but for the benefit of people watching in the VODs, I do cut up all the VODs and everything. Uh, let's just quickly have a look. So we are going to be moving on to... Let's actually just bring this up. It's going to be White versus Old Man Slum. So... Old Man Slum not faring too well so far, has lost both of his games, but he is a constant appearance for SK Bravo. They must have a lot of faith in him. Uh, really nice to see him once again. This is going to be his chance at a redemption a redemption match. Um, it's going to be kind of cool to see if he can actually take this game off White. And his opponent, of course, is White. He is the Protoss. And he is a very, very good player. Uh, I've played him recently in the BSL. Going to be a strong opponent for Old Man Slum, I feel, here. Uh, but White only had one appearance so far, from what I can tell, unless my uh, stats are wrong, which hopefully they are not. Uh, but let's actually just have a quick look at the map. They are going to be fighting on Newer Moonglaive. Uh, of course, if you've just tuned in, set 3 was a walkover, but I'm going to save the result of that until now, uh, until after this even. And then we can decide whether or not we're going into an ace match. But here we go. Can Old Man Slum bring it back to a 2-1 a deficit and maybe take it to a 2-all with a walkover? Or is it going to be a quick 3-0 for White uh, with a 4-0 with a walkover? Let's find out. Hopefully it's not going to be too one-sided. But DM are a very strong team. SK Bravo still trying to find their feet in the tournament. And let's see how they both do. Let's actually head on over to the game screen now and let's get started on this third game. Okay, hopefully that's all transitioned over. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Mega 4P, I apparently need to make that a lot smaller because that is absolutely huge right now. Uh, I'll just make it a little bit smaller there so it doesn't impede too much. Uh, but as you can see, starting us off in the 8 o'clock position here, it is going to be playing in the color white, which is going to make casting this incredibly confusing. It's going to be Old Man Slum. And spawning here over on the 4 o'clock position, it's going to be his opponent, of course. Uh, Moon Neo Moonglaive is a 3-player map. It's going to be... DMs white. Now it looks like we're going to have the early pylon going up for a wall. Uh, now I know in previous weeks, DM white was saying about how he had no idea how you're supposed to PVZ on this map. Hopefully uh, he figured it out by this map, uh, otherwise we could have a pretty one-sided game. But... Um, Yeah, uh, it should be a lot of fun here. So, uh, what are we going to see White going for? He's going to probably go for a gate expand here. He did actually send his probe back to mine some uh, before he sent it out. No, it's going to be a forge. Kind of strange. Uh, more recently in PVCs, I've seen when probes are sent to um, scout straight away, uh, you actually often see that there is a forge expand coming in. If they go back to the minerals, it's usually for a gateway expand to get an extra five minerals to bring up the gateway a little bit quicker. Uh, but you know what? Not too much of a problem. I'm uh, not really going to cause too many issues. Of course, it is going to delay his scout a little bit. Uh, but unless he's going to get five pulled, which thankfully for him, he's not. Uh, but he is going to get, I believe that was a ten pull or an eleven pull. Um, he's actually going to have a few problems. He needs to make sure he scouts the links. And uh, the casting is live, but the uh, the games are being played from replays. Uh, just because there is players all across the world playing in this tournament. That includes Korea, South America, America, Canada, Europe, Russia. Um, I believe we have... I think there might be a Chinese player as well. Uh, but either way, there's a lot of people in this tournament from all different ways of life, different countries, and the only real way uh, we can make sure that all the games get played, or at least the vast majority of them get played, um, is making sure that people can sort of arrange their games with their opponent to make sure everything gets played and everything. Uh, I know we've had a couple of walkovers so far. A few times they've been unavoidable. That is one of the 
sad things about having such a global tournament and what makes something like the old Pro League a lot easier to pull off because of course they did have everyone in one, one location at one time and they would just pull the teams into a studio, do everything in one go and send them home again. So a little bit harder to do everything online. We do actually have the third hatchery coming up very, very quickly for Old Man Slum. He really does want to secure that other main as quickly as possible. Two telecom. Oh man. I look so we're gonna get some telecom hate in the chat. The caster pretends to be a mic. Yes I do. They got me in because they wanted a foreign caster and here I am. I'm in white and I'm in soul. Um for the same reason in both. Uh but it's pretty cool either way. It's better than when I was in Vex. Vex was not a very good team. So you know what? It feels good to be part of a community. Uh, but, I mean, it'll be interesting to see exactly what White's going to do. I know he did struggle, as I said, with PvZ on this map beforehand. Is he going to be uh, Is he going to be struggling again, or is he going to have found his feet for this week? Uh, Neo Moonglaive has been in the pool two weeks now, so hopefully in those three weeks he's done a little bit of practice. I know he has been playing a lot of practice games. I've seen him asking for games quite a lot. I know he was playing some PvPs yesterday as well. Uh, so he is quite an active player. I'm not too sure about Old Man Slum, I don't really uh, follow the same sort of circles he does, uh, but I know SK Bravo are putting in a lot of practice as well, so should be pretty cool. Let me just say thank you to the Shaquel's Goy. I, I, oh my god, that, that I, why the hell did I send that name out? Either way, uh, thank you for the follow. Hopefully that isn't like some kind of... Uh, I probably shouldn't have read that name out. Either way, whatever, I don't mean anything by it, I'm just reading out someone's name. Okay, so we're going to have the Zealot moving up to the third base, going to ch chase away the only drone that would have been mining there. And the second Zealot should actually be able to go in. Is there any Lings popping out? Yes, there is. Uh, two Lings are not going to be enough to take on this Zealot, but uh, should be pretty cool either way. Now, as you can see, we've got the drone moving back here to mine. It's run the entire way across the map. Uh, this is actually going to be taking down the hatchery. It'll take it a long time, uh, but if left unchecked, uh, the second zealot is certainly going to be able to help take that down. Lynx have actually come back to try and defend against this one zealot, but he is going to be able to get us around. This is going to be pretty good for him, for Lynx, obviously. Going to take that out fairly quickly. Uh, we don't actually have the second zealot attack in the hatchery, which is kind of interesting. He may have been able to take this down. Of course, there will be a lot of links popping out here, but he can still uh, go behind the minerals if he wants to. Looks like he's going to try and focus the hatchery. Will not get it, but the micro, pretty good so far. Not really quick enough, though. And both of these zealots going to go down the hatchery. Very low on health, though. Below, uh... Oh my god, White, please do not ruin the game in the, uh... Please do not ruin the game in the chat. We do have Templar Archives and Satilla coming up. There is a pylon to help all this off. Two cannons should actually help help with that as well. And we do have a cannon in the main, just making sure that he doesn't die to any any Mutilus player or anything. There is, in fact, a Spire up. It's probably going to be for Scourge, uh, but Mutilus play could be a strong possibility, of course. There's not really much mining going on at the third base here, so... Uh, I mean, it could be an all-in. He's not really too sure. Looks like we do have a Corsair out. I'm going to be able to take down this first Overlord. And, um, yeah, pretty crazy. So, let's actually have a look. There's some drones transferring all the way from the natural, just to make sure he gets some mining going. Hydralis Den is up with the fourth hatchery on the way. Uh, fifth hatchery should be coming up as well with the evolution chamber at the third base just to sort of create a bit of a semi wall going to allow him to do exactly what he needs to do defend his bases and uh, feel pretty good about himself we do actually have a lurker aspect coming on the way so this is 100% just going to be for scourge and as you can see the scourge are going to fly in here are they going to be able to get onto a corsair looks like they're not really really nicely done by white going to actually be able to hold that uh, Corsair, keep that Corsair alive, even gets a kill on the Scourge with the cannon as well, just making sure uh, that he doesn't lose anything. 
and I wouldn't say it's standard to get the cannon in the mineral line already, but he does know that um, there is a spire, so I think he was just being careful. Usually you would build a cannon by the stargate anyway, so I guess he's killing two birds with one stone, just making sure that he doesn't lose any early Corsairs, and also uh, that he doesn't lose anything crazy. It looks like we're going to have the Scourge in hot pursuit of the Corsairs gets. A connection? I have no idea how that connected. That was miles away. Uh, but it looks like the other Scourge will get taken down as well. So it does save his Corsair. Very important. But these Zealots and the DT are going to be able to do a lot of damage to these Lings out here. But it's kind of interesting that he did show the uh, show the DT. Of course, if Slum is looking at his Zealot, or looking at his Lings even, he will see the Shimmering of the DT. There's of course the Overlord here as well. The Corsairs on coming in first of all to clear up the Overlord, so this is a bit of a questionable decision. Uh, but it does look like he's going to pull back when he realizes what's going on. He knows there's a Sunken, knows there's an Overlord, and the Sairs look to be like they're going to go in for a little bit of harassment. Now we do have a lot of pylons being added, a lot of, or a couple of gateways, so he is going to go up to seven gateways right now. A uh, pretty good number for two base. And as you can see, the benefit. Of taking, um, of taking the third base here, he is actually going to get the other main very, very quickly. Of course, it is going to be a full, a full gas and everything. So, nothing too crazy there. Going to get, uh, going to give him a lot of, um, a lot of presence on the map. Going to allow him to tech up very, very quickly. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see the hive coming up soon, which we will do. As the queen's nest is on the way now. Uh, White could be going for the drone play uh, of getting a lot of queens against Protoss, but I usually see drone do that late game. And I'm not so sure if uh, White is too au fait with drone style. It looks like the Corsair is going to try and go in. Does split his Corsairs pretty nicely against them, but there is a some kind of... Oh, there is a Spore, uh, but this... Oh man, this life is going to do a lot of damage, but it doesn't matter. Zealots are going to get into the main. Unfortunately, uh, the Corsairs, I believe, actually went down... Oh no, they actually did survive. They're going to chase away the last Overlord, but Overlord Speed is done. Gets the cancel on the fourth base. Quite a nice move. And it's actually going to be very, very annoying for uh, Old Man Slum to actually try and go and take this base. He's going to move up with a Lurker, but he needs to be careful. Needs to make sure he doesn't get sniped as he's borrowing. Uh, but it looks like the Zealots and the DT were on hold position. So that's going to feel pretty good for Old Man Slum. I'd say White is at a little bit of an advantage now. He's getting his third base now as well. Uh, which is, of course, a gas base. Now, on the very, very first version of uh, Neo Moonglaive, this base... Wait, was it... No, I think it was this base. Was It was either the third or the mineral only... Or, it was either the third or the fourth base was actually a mineral only. Uh, so it was a lot harder to get gas as Protoss and Terran. And, of course, Zerg had a few problems as well, but they would normally take the uh, other main anyway. So it wasn't really too much of a big deal. Looks like Slum's money... Getting a little bit high, I'd like to say he's saving for Ultralisks here. Uh, just making sure that um, he does get the Hive tech up. Going to be able to get all his upgrades at once, it looks like. And, I mean, White is doing a pretty good job. Funnily enough, there is, there's a DT camp in the Lurker. The Lurker can't kill any of the Zealots, and it can't unborrow either. This is just kind of a a race between who is going to regen faster and who can get, like, get the uh, detection there quicker. Uh, but here we go. Looks like we do have a decent number of Hydralisks now. Going to be moving out onto the middle of the map. Needs to make sure he takes a little bit of map control. Uh, can't let the Protoss get too far out of hand, of course. Uh, very, very easy for the Protoss to hold the third base here with the choke. And hold the natural with the choke as well. Uh, of course, it's going to be hard if he does get Lurk and Contain to break up here. Uh, but there is a lot of movement. But here we go. Looks like the uh, DT will get taken down. He will not get... It looks like the uh, Lurker did win the game of chicken there between detection. Uh, Slum did send the Overlord in first. And White is going to lose all the Zealots over here. Not really too much to say about that. He's going to lose his presence on the fourth base. But meanwhile, Old Man Slum is taking his fourth and fifth bases at the moment. Uh, in the old version of the map, I'm fairly certain this was the mineral only. Uh, so he wouldn't have got this all-important fourth gas. I think the uh, it was either the third or mineral... Um, I think the minerals were even on the bottom on this base, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time since I've seen uh, the original Moonglaive, but Neo Moonglaive did make a few changes to make it a little bit more balanced, making it a little bit better. As you can see, the normal moment in the game of the Protoss taking down their own cannons to break their way out the base nail. I'm going to kill this 
pylon. Is this actually going to unpower anything? No, it isn't. Looks like this pylon is going to be a decent enough position. And here we go. It looks like White is going to move out onto the map. He has a fairly big army right now. Of course, his probe count is going to be quite high as well. Uh, so can't count out Slum's army just yet. And of course, there is going to be lurkers and everything defending this base. So it may be a little bit harder to push in. Sixth base, though, coming up for Slum. Looks like the fourth base and the fifth base have been finished. He's going to start adding some static defense on over here. And this is a lot of units coming in from Slum. DM White's army is completely stuck in the middle of the map right now. Not the best storms, but does get a decent number of Hydralis. Could have been better. And hopefully he does have a few more storms. Yes, he does. But whiffing yet another storm. Bit of an unfortunate uh, mishap there. Uh, good uh, storm dodging, though, by Old Man Slum, though. And here we go. Looks like we will have DM White still trying to press his uh, army advantage here. Gonna see if he can break into the natural. There's a lot of lurkers being morphed. If he can get there quick enough, he can storm the wall, but he does not know about them, of course. Needs to keep his observers with his army. Can't afford to lose them to overlords and hydralisks. And uh, I feel bad for White in the chat right now. If, you, uh, if you're if you watching on the YouTube VODs, I'd recommend checking out the Twitch VOD as well of this game uh, when this goes up. Purely because... Uh, there's people talking to White, and uh, they're, they're, they're being as nice as possible, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, not really too much to go on. But the fourth base is going to go down, but he does, of course, have a new two, another two bases to fall back on. Uh, but DM White's army may... I keep calling him DM White, but White's army may actually get caught out in the middle of the map. I suppose it's because this is technically White's army as well, but here we go. Big, big army spread by White at the moment. Two upgrades have been done, but here we go. There is a lot of units coming into the third base. Gonna barrel in. Is this gonna be enough to do enough damage? You know, White's units coming in behind. And he is running into a complete death trap. Oh my god, so many units going down to the lurkers. But he should be able to get all of them now. But that was such an, a huge amount of damage to take. Two of the lurkers actually dying at the same time. Uh, but that was a very, very costly mistake. He does not have Observer Speed. Uh, I wouldn't believe he'd have Observer, uh, bleh, observer Sight Range. Not many people do get that. Uh, I've seen some pro players do it every once in a while. Uh, kind of important in some matchups. Not too much here. Uh, but that was, a, that was a bit of an unfortunate engagement for White. He does maintain his supply advantage, of course. Uh, but now we do have Old Man Slum mining off of this, which is now his fourth base. And the fifth base up here, even leaving a lurker in the base just to make sure nothing breaks through. But DM White still trying to push in. Got He does have 3-1 upgrades now against the 1-1 one, one and 2-1 of the Zerg player. Nice storm there, the best storm I think he's done so far this game. And there is so many units coming in from uh, from Slum from every angle. So, uh, Zergling's going to try and take down this. Oh no, all the Templar. All the Templar before he can storm. All going to go down. Nice storm. So on the uh, Lurkers, but does lose most of his Templar there. And that is a huge, huge thing to lose. But he's banking quite a lot of money at the moment. He's been on three base for a little bit. His main and natural should actually be in close to mind out. Here we go. The main actually nearly mined out. Natural as well. Uh, he's going to need to be able to secure this fourth base. So if he does want to stand a chance in the game... Zerg has a lot of bases right now. What hive tech do we have coming on? We've got the Defy the Mound up and ready. Uh, do we see Ultras or anything like that? I wouldn't believe we would do. Uh, but you never know. Ultras do every once in a while get to see play in uh, ZVP. But looks like it is just going to be Defy the So now going to try and nullify the uh, Dragoons of uh, White. But the thing is, Slum doesn't seem to realize he's killed so many Dragoons that White has been pretty much been uh, remaxing on everything but Dragoons. He's using a lot of his minerals on cannons, gonna be building a lot of Zealots, and a lot of his gas is gonna be going on Templar. Uh, but as you can see, pretty much full Zealot waves from the gateways. He has stopped building Corsairs, he's not built any for a while. Uh, but with Overlord speed on the way, it would be interesting to see some drops. Now, this is the sort of moment in the game where uh, a game I was watching Best play the other day, uh, he just starts building cannons absolutely everywhere. Kinda like this, but he builds them in his main as well. Uh, just to stop drops, that could be a very nice thing for uh, Protoss players in the SCPL to maybe start looking into copying. It seemed to work out really, really well for best in that game. And I've seen him do it quite a lot when I watch him stream, so... Uh, the Overlord gonna scout out that this fourth base is done. 
Of course, when we do have Swarm and Plague in play, it makes it a lot better for the uh, for the Zerg player. Looks like we actually have some Corsairs scouting around, making sure there's not two bases here. Uh, but there's going to be an Overlord scouting to make sure to see if he can take this base. And here we go. Looks like White is going to move in. He has a 50 supply advantage right now. A nice Storm, uh, but could could have done with Storming at the back. But no, uh, no Storm dodge there. So really, really nice. Really, really nice engagement here by uh, White, not losing too much supply, uh, killing a lot from Zerg player. Uh, but where is he going to do any damage? Oh my god, Scourge going for the Observer, gets the Observer, so Lurkers are a little bit more powerful here. And so many units coming out of Old Man Slum's bases. Here we go, he's going to move in with the Adrenalings. They're going to try and get some of the Dragoons. This Dragoon on 13 kills, uh, this one on 9, so... Pretty much veterans in this Protoss army right now, not going to really be wanting to lose them. Uh, but White has a pretty big army out on the middle of the map, uh, not as big as it could be. He is now 20 supply away from the cap. Over uh, here we go, looks like this Stefano is going to go in for a plague. Gets a nice plague, but only hitting four zealots actually. Uh, not the best plague for him to do. But that is a lot of energy, but of course, uh, Defiler energy is practically free. Uh, it costs you uh, 25 energy. Uh, to consume something. Looks like he's already filled up the energy bar. Uh, but looks like we will have the process army moving across. Going to try and deny this base again. Uh, but the one issue that White is going to run into is when this base starts to become mined out. Where legitimately is his fifth base going to be? He needs to make something happen. He needs to try and break through at least one of these locations very shortly. Or he could find himself getting overrun by the Zerkler in the late game. We've got another two hatcheries on the way. Uh, do we have any additional hive tech coming up? Looks like we actually have some zealots trying to move in. Gonna scout out how many lurkers are there. He doesn't, I believe, actually have an observer with his army. Yes, he does. Finally does have observer speed as well. But this is such a big army from Slum. He's gonna look to try and press into an engagement here. Looks like we have 2-2 on the links. There's gonna be 3-2 for the Hydralist. So the upgrade advantage actually going to the Zerg player, I'd say, at the moment. A nice playing on more of the zealots again. Uh, but this is a very, very nice trade. Once more for White, he's going to have to spend both of his uh, both of his High Templar into Archons. Interestingly, during the replay, the uh, the image doesn't change. Kind of straight. Oh, it's because it's on one health when he morphed it. The uh, Templar must have been nearly dead. That is like the lowest health uh, Archon you can possibly get. Good luck when that runs out of shields. <laughs> uh, but here we go. It looks like we will actually have the extra hatcheries finishing up. He's going to start remaxing. He's actually run out of upgrades to research, I think. Uh, no, he can get plus three carapace. Does look like he's not getting it just yet. Uh, should be looking into getting that soon. We do have a big probe transfer. Uh, one thing, as I mentioned before, the natural is going to be mined out. The main is mined out as well. Uh, due to the nature of the way Zerg mines, uh, he's not actually mined out of his main yet. Will be soon. Uh, but here we go. Looks like we're going to actually have a big engagement here. There's a lot of observers. Four observers in one place. He's going to try and push in now. Going to try and kill the Zerg. While he isn't at max, and here we go, looks like the Archon's taking a lot of damage up front. This one health, uh, one health Dragoon, oh, Archon going down, unfortunately, but this is a lot of units busting in here. There's a lot of units coming from behind, though. How is he going to fare in this engagement? A nice plate does go down on the Dragoons. Is it going to be enough, though? And it looks like the Archon's waging their way forward through into the Zerg Natural, and the units at the back have been cleaned up, but... Suddenly, Old Man Slum has actually even knelt the supply. A lot of the Dragoons very low on health. A nice plague once again. Nice storm, though. Oh, he needs to target that uh, Defiler if he can. But looks like he is going to try and run away with his army. A very clever choice, I would say. It does cost a lot to rebuild the Protoss army. And he doesn't actually have that many bases. He's got a pretty much full base here. Uh, his third base is nearly mined out. And of course, uh, White does have a lot of healthy bases right now, but as I said before, how is White going to expand again? This is a very difficult map to take a fifth base on if you cannot bust one of the locations. Uh, of course, this is going to be the same no matter what happens, and maybe this is what White was saying when he was saying he couldn't PvZ. But I, believe, I feel like White should have gone into Reaver Drops or something like that a little bit sooner, just try to uh, actually deal with this. Nice Storm does go down, but on top of the Gateway to begin with, Actually overlapping storms, but it is going to be enough to hold off the Zerg army for now, but here we go. Here is the storm and the swarm. Going to make it very, very annoying. The Zerglings are going to be able to get on top of everything. And they're actually going to be able to kill a lot of the High Templar here if he's not careful. 
Storming his last cannon. Gonna allow him to tidy this up. And, uh, I, d I don't know what to say here. Looks like this one Hydralisk un <laughs> under the swarm. Gonna be doing what I can. Even wasting a, um, wasting a storm on this. I kind of don't feel like that was worth it. But the uh, sixth base is gonna be reestablished. Gonna add a lot of creep colonies on immediately. We should have 3-3. Three, three. Oh, we're actually going for 3-2-1 here for the Protoss player. Do we actually have three carapace? No three carapace yet is actually on the way. I get the feeling he should have added three carapace by now, but here we go. I can hear something being blown up, but I'm not sure what it is. Oh, there we go. There's actually a drop in the main. I don't think this is what was being blown up, but uh, maybe it was with a cannon. Uh, but looks like this drop, gonna try and do what it can with the adrenaline, trying to take down any of the buildings. Now, if this was a full drop, this would have done a lot more damage, but the Zealots are sitting idle. The Stargate is gonna go down, and White is not gonna be feeling good about that, but no, he does manage to save it at the last second. Uh, Old Man Slum doesn't actually uh, target fire that very well, but this is a lot of units from our Zerg player right now. He does not have three melee attack, does not have three carapace. Looks like he has finally realized he doesn't melee attack, but hasn't realized about carapace just yet. And here we have it. We have the cows. The cows are in play. They're going to be very, very strong. They should have their upgrades coming up soon. And this is going to be a very, very important engagement. Of course, 3-3-2 three, three, now for the Zerg player. Going to make it very hard until these Ultra upgrades come in to actually do anything against the Zealots. That a bit, here we go. This is an important, well, I'd say it was an important moment. But I think that actually helps the uh, Protoss player more than it helps him. Those units from the Zerg player getting absolutely annihilated. So much efficiency from the Zerg army. Of course, we do have... Protoss with Reavers now. Going to make it even harder to make use of those Defilers. Going to have to be very, very careful with the shuttles, though. Uh, they are both on very low health. He does have complete center map control. Interestingly, he's left his Reavers over here. Uh, but here we go. More links coming in from behind. Going to do what he can. Takes one of the Dragoons down. Going to take a couple of the Zealots out. Possibly no. 3-2-3 three, three, uh, Zealots are completely insane uh, when it comes to... Um, comes to cost efficiency against only a 2-2 Zerg army, but here we go. Looks like we are going to see him pushing into the 6th base once again. Mina Natural has mined out of Old Man Slum, so he does realistically need this mining. White's still sitting on such a huge bank, but units coming from all sides right now are going to try and clear out these Protoss forces. But with these Reavers here, this is going to be a lot of damage, and it's going to be very hard to break through. A lot of the drones going to go down uh, hatchery goes down as well with all the sunkens. But is this going to be enough units coming in from behind? As you can see, there's a large swell of units coming out from around where the 7th base was. The Oh man, he loses the shuttle with one reaver inside, so that's going to be pretty bad for him. He's going to have to waddle the other shuttles back to the engagement. Uh, pretty unfortunate for him. And it looks like he is going to lose a lot of units. Slum's bank is slowly dwindling. He has a lot of gas though. Uh, of course, that isn't as beneficial for Zerg as it is Protoss. Protoss can just build a lot of Templar, uh, but he does still have a lot of mining going on. Uh, the third base nearly mined out now for Old Man Slum, but of course, the longer the game goes on, the closer White becomes to being mined out. Of course, he's not breaking the locations he needs to break to try and expand again. And doesn't actually get this base. He didn't scout it, I don't think. And that is going to hurt him in the long run. If Old Man Slum can hold on long enough, slowly but surely, the cost efficiency of his army and the sheer number and volume of his army is going to be far too strong. Looks like he has finally scouted out the bottom base. He's going to see that it's empty. Hopefully it's going to be a pro, but yes it is. So we're going to see finally a fourth base, no, a fifth base even, coming up for white, but this has been a pretty epic game so far, uh, given the fact a lot of the PVCs we've seen so far in the SUPL have been over pretty quickly. This is a pretty long, intense macro game. Looks like we do have some Reavers left out on their own in the middle of the map. Gets a Defiler, though. Really, really nice move. But here we go. Another big engagement coming in. Lots of Hydras pushing in from both sides. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Don't want to zoom out too low. Uh, too, uh, too low, even. Too far. Uh, but here we go, big, big engagement right now. Lots of damage being done to the Protoss army, but lots more being done to the Zerg. Showing a lot of cost efficiency here is DM Wiper. He's going to be pushing up against pure Hydralisks with no Storm, just Archons. But look at the efficiency of the Archons and the Zealots. Just so much damage being dealt. 
and he doesn't even need to really worry about pushing into this base. It's almost mined out. He just needs to hold this base. If he can hold this base and take it further into the late game while denying this base and this base, he should be in a good position. But I don't know why White is saying he played bad this game. He's done really, really well as it got further into the game. Now, we do have another new shot on the way. The, even the shuttles do benefit from the plasma shields, of course. Uh, that's going to improve their regen. And I believe it gives them, like, one extra shield or something. I'm not entirely sure how the shield upgrades work. I've never really looked into the maths. But here we go. The Archons, DTs, and Zealots going to push into this base. Going to lose two of his observers, though. And that is pretty big. Looks like we actually have a big engagement behind this. Uh, lots of units try and flood in from the top once again. Going to split the Protoss army up. And it looks like White may actually fall apart here. He cannot afford to rebuild his army. He's going to try and take down these units. There's no Overlord here. So the DTs will eventually be able to clean this up. But is he going to keep hold of this base? It's going to be very hard to decide. Looks like the... Uh, Hydralis dying immediately, and here we go, we finally have an Overlord over here, that is not long for this world. And as you can see, White is entirely mined out of the top left, or top right even. He's going to try and mine on the bottom left, he does have a lot of gas already. Uh, but looks like uh, Slum has seen, or thinks he doesn't uh, have the ability to win, and GG, White will take the series 3-0. Now, as I did say, there was a... Uh, let's actually just bring up my face here, just while I show this off. Um, but basically, there was a, uh, a walkover in this series. It was the third game, and it did go in favor of White. So White will, in fact, get a 4-0 uh, a victory in the series. So really well played by them. Of course, one of them was a walkover. That was a bit unfortunate. But the three games they played in, they played really well. Uh, of course, this isn't it for the SCPL, guys. Today, there is another series coming your way in just a moment. Uh, I'm just going to quickly update the overlay, make sure it's all up to date, then I can show off the results and everything as well. And uh, then we can go for a quick break to give my voice a little bit of a rest, although I seem to be getting more into it now. My voice was actually worse in the first game than it has been now. Uh, but as you can see, let's actually just quickly report this. just need to put... Thorsan versus Kyria in there as well. That would have been on Grand Line SE. That would have been a really cool TVT to see as well. And we've not actually seen too much TVT. I don't think we've seen a single TVT this tournament. Guys, you need to recruit more Terrans. This is not fair. There's like way too many Protoss and Zerg in each of the teams. We need more Terrans to balance it out. Like, to, if Tasagi is real, where are all the Terrans? I know, like, well, saying that, Sol has four of them, so maybe that is part of the problem. <laughs> and SKA has one as well. Uh, but let's actually just quickly report this game as well. That win did, of course, go towards Torsan, and it did go towards DM in the end. So let's bring up the results screen. Let's head into a little bit of a break. And let's go back to... Um, Yeah, let's go back to uh, a little bit of a break and let's come back with more STPL action. After the break, guys, we are going to have, I believe it is, how have I forgotten? I set everything up for this earlier. I even typed out the thread. It's going to be Rev versus Foreign Brood War, I believe. So that should be good. Oh my god, someone else brought in the uh, prison thing again. TBT and I quit. You can't do that. Uh, but yeah, basically, I did get a haircut. I got a haircut a couple of, well, last week. Uh, and I do it in European time because I came to realize Americans know what European time is, but not British time. I don't know why. I can't actually explain why either. Uh, but that is a thing that happens. Now, I am just going to quickly take a five minute break just to give my voice a rest. And also to get some more water and set up the overlay. So I'll be back in five minutes, guys. Don't go anywhere. Uh, SCPL is not over for today. There's still a lot more action coming your way. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So see you guys very, very soon. Let's actually just sort this. I'm going to make sure that's set to five minutes. That should be enough. And up next, it is going to be Foreign Brood War. Versus Rev. There we go. Back in a second, guys.
Okay guys, <clears throat> we are back with more SDPL action. If you have just tuned in, we're going to be moving on to our second match of today. And to introduce us to the teams, let's head on over to the overlay. Uh, the first game I casted today was in fact DM versus SK Bravo. So that means we are going to be moving in to... It's going to be Foreign Brood War All-Stars against Clan Revolution. Foreign Brood War All-Stars won their first game. Clan Revolution has won one game, lost one game as well. Uh, they, they've been doing pretty well so far. Uh, as you can see, the Zerg players have been doing a really good job. Their Protoss players haven't been doing the best, but you know what? It's early days in the tournament still. Wait, did I not have a space in between that? Whoops! You know what? It's not too much of a big problem. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be Clan Revolution versus Foreign Brood War. The maps we're going to see in this series, just for the benefit of the people that have just tuned in, we're going to start on Gladiator, move on to Polaris Rhapsody, move on to Grand Dynasty, move on to Neo Moonglaive, and if we get to the Ace match, we will head on over to Judgment Day. Now, that is a pretty cool map for the Ace match. We've had some really good maps. Sorry, we've had some really good games on that so far. Oh man, the stats are not right. No way. Oh damn, my database keeps not recording things. It's a pain. I'm going to have to fix them. Uh, but you know what? It's fine. Let's not worry. Uh, but let's actually head on. Uh, I've already shown that. Let's have a look at the table now. The stats apparently aren't completely correct. I need to basically go through, manually check all of them. Uh, I'll do that this weekend when I've got a little bit more time. But as you can see, SK Alpha with a pretty good lead at the moment. Of course, we did just have the DM game. That's not updated yet, but we'll update very shortly uh, when I next load the application, pretty much. And that's going to put them in second, I believe, at the moment. Just behind uh, Urk, actually. They they have gone 8 for 5. Uh, but let's actually head on to have a look at who our first players are going to be. Uh, it's going to be Hermu, or Hiramu. I'm not sure how to say it. I'm going to say Hermu, though. That's what I say. He's going to be the Zerg fighting for Foreign Brood War All-Stars. And I know that Care Bear Avi is going to be playing Terran. But he's a dirty race picker and he ruins everything, uh, as all race pickers do. So my overlay is not up to date. I'm going to have to fix everything quite manual, or fix everything manually. Not really too much I can do about that, but um, I need to try and sort of... Um, I need to work out a way of editing the system to make sure race picking doesn't completely ruin everything because it makes it way too hard to set up at the moment. I have to keep editing the database manually and I think that's where all the stats keep getting all messy. But... Uh, we're going to be moving on to Gladiator for the first map. Uh, both of the players, pretty good players, showing uh, pretty showing pretty good games so far. Uh, in TVC, it is two for three at the moment. Zerg are actually favoured on this map so far. And Hirmu or Hermu, I do know uh, that um, we need big maps for late game TVC. I, I, I don't want to do that with a ground path maze. Oh my god, that map is so good. I hate it so much, but it was so fun to play on with the BGH minerals. But Gladiator, you may have seen this in the latest two ASLs. Originally from the Bacchus OSL 2010. Really, really good map. Low ground mains, high ground naturals. Uh, third bases do have... Well, there's like really small mineral only bases in between the uh, pizza wedges and a third base or fourth base with the gas as well. A pretty good map for Zerg, pretty good map for Terran as well. So let's see how both of these players react on this map, what builds they go for, and let's see how the game is going to go. So let's head on over to the game screen. Let's not waste any more time, and let's get started with the series. Okay, as you can see, moving straight into the game here, starting us off in the top left position, 10 o'clock, we do have the Orange Zerg, Amu, and spawning in the bottom right, we do have his opponent fighting for Rev, usually a Zerg player, but playing Terran this game for some reason, it is Care Bear. 
Now, I know that Avi Love is in chat. He is, in fact, Care Bear. Uh, so if you do have any questions about why he did choose Terran, uh, maybe it'd be a good place to uh, listen. Uh, the other place he could listen is if, uh, if Care Bear does get chosen as the man of the match, he will have a lot of questions fired his way. I know there's not been a lot of man of the match uh, interviews so far. I've been contacting the captains, but not really... Getting too much of a response, or if I send the questions, I've not got a response from the players. So hopefully I can catch up with those very soon. Uh, one of my favorite things about the league so far is I really, really want to try and push the identity of the players and the teams. I don't I don't want the foreign brood war scene to be as nameless as it is. Like, when you look at the Korean scene, everybody knows the names of the players. They know what teams they used to be playing on. During the Pro League days, everyone had, like, a favorite team, and I kind of want to bring that to the foreign community. And that is, uh, that is why, basically, uh, I've basically, well, I'm repeating myself a lot, but that is why I set up the SCPL. I really enjoy Team League, so I want to make things better in the foreign community for teams and players, and I want to put on a show, and I'm hoping, so far, people feel like I have been doing that. There's going to be a little few or there's going to be a few amount of changes in the overlay between round one and two or uh, possibly even between round one and the playoffs i'm not too sure there's going to be a set of playoffs at the end of each round as i said in the first series today i'm actually going to put up a big post likely tomorrow evening explaining the entire format of the tournament just in case anybody doesn't really understand it uh, just to give it a quick once over here we are going to see a possibly a very quick third base looks like it's more going to be a scout, uh, just checking. Not the most efficient of scouts, of course. Uh, he does go all the way up to the base. I think he may have been trying to hide a base here, to be honest. He's not actually going to send a send a drone down here to scout this, so kind of interesting. But uh, I guess he's going to wait until he his overlord gets to the other base before he sees anything. There is going to be links on the way. Uh, going to be a 9 pool into 12 hatch here. I did miss that. Uh, but as I was saying, there's going to be four rounds to the tournament. One of them is going to be a Winner's League format, so that is a King of the Hill format. Uh, that's going to likely be round three, although I might make it round two. I'm, I think I'll make it round three. That will give the uh, teams a little bit more of a chance to play as many of their players as possible in the first two rounds. Um, groups will, of course, change between each round, so I'll do a, a group draw every time, so we won't have the same Group A and the same Group B, but hopefully we'll see a few repeat matches here. Uh, looks like Care Bear going to be building his bunker. I think this may be a hex too high. I'm not sure the uh, the CC is going to fit here now. This should be interesting. Is it going to fit? Yes, it is. Perfect spacing. Uh, so Care Bear has actually been checking out this map. Uh, at the end of every round, there is going to be a set of playoffs. And they are going to generate you league points towards the rest of the season. And basically, the teams with the top four league points at the very end of round four and after the round four playoffs will be heading in to the grand finals uh looks like we actually have two lanes getting into the main not really going to be able to achieve too much uh, but the grand finals going to be where the prize pool is going to be distributed uh i've said this before but basically uh the prize pool is going to be split up between all of the teams uh, so even if your team does not make it to the grand finals uh, there is going to be a small amount being uh, given out to the bottom 10 teams in the league. Everyone is going to get at least something uh, from participating in the tournament. I don't want to. I don't want to make anyone leave empty-handed. I'm going to make it a pretty fair prize distribution. Of course, the highest will go to first and second. Third and fourth will get a decent chunk as well, and there'll probably be about a percentage or so of the prize pool for the uh, bottom 10 teams each. So. There is a lot of Matarino codes, guys. Uh, basically, what we're looking into is... I'm trying to get some more codes from them as well. So, as you can see, uh, there is... Basically going to be uh, like some Matarino spam every once in a while. You can do exclamation mark donate as well. Uh, that will give you the code STPL1 and the link to put it in. You can put that in without spending any money whatsoever. Uh, but you will be able to add a pound of a dollar even to the donation, uh, to the prize pool even. And the other thing is, uh, of course, there are other ways you can donate as well. You can follow a few people on Twitter. There's some Matarino sponsors. And also visit some websites. Uh, they're perfect little legitimate websites, guys. 
Uh, the additional sponsor stuff I put on, I put on because it's not too intrusive. Once you follow, uh, that will put the money on. You can always unfollow them after, but hopefully uh, you do keep them there just for a little bit. Uh, that will actually add different amounts of surprise. Well, you can see that on the donations page, though, and every a little bit does count. It all will go to all of the teams at the end of the tournament. So obviously the more teams we have, the better. But here we go. Looks like we're actually going to have Care Bear going in for some aggression. Going to find the one Sunken. And that is going to be enough to deter him from pushing in. Of course, Sunkens do have, I believe, a base one armor. Uh, so they do pretty good. I'm not sure if that's true, though. Uh, but they do 40 damage. So that's a lot of damage against the Marines. Uh, of course, I think they do less damage against small units. Which is why they do only do 25 damage, I believe, to a Marine per shot. Uh, which is why Marines can take two shots, but um, still pretty good. Uh, Sunken's, of course, one of the best things of defense, or Modicum's, I think that's the right word of defense, that the uh, Zerg player has. Uh, but Care Bear, of course, hasn't... Uh, one good thing for Hermu is he's not overbuilt Sunken's. He knows that was just a small bit of aggression, so... And that is... Uh... <laughs> okay, uh, just to bring up something from chat as well, as Foxhand said... Uh, just in case, I'm going to bring this up at the end of the cast as well. Uh, the SCPL, of course, is going on three days a week, but there's a lot of other tournaments going on at the moment. So please do your best to tune into all of them. Uh, I know Zero, just to just to give this a shout out in the middle of the stream as well, is going to release the replays for Chobo League, and he's going to have a different caster each week casting them. Now, this is going to be people who don't necessarily cast all the time. Like You have people like me, Sham2 and Zero, who are pretty much on... Every week or every other week, looks like we'll have the first scan going down onto the natural. Gonna scout the spire and the uh, and the sunken count. So really, really good scout by him. Uh, but basically, he's gonna have a little competition. He's gonna get some of the like lesser known casters. Not that I'm really well known either. Um, a chance to sort of cast some of the BSL games, get their name out there. Because of course, anybody who wants to uh, cast in the Rubble community is welcome to. Of course, there's a lot of days which are being taken up by a lot of other uh, tournaments and stuff, but uh, there is a lot of chance and opportunity for you to cast as well. I'm guessing Zero will probably make it on Saturday prime time, get some uh, lesser known casters, some more viewers, get some more people interested in uh, Brood War as well, try and sort of um, expand the viewing audience as well, because uh, that's what we all want for the Brood War scene. Looks like the overload. This is a lot of turrets, though. Okay, I, I know that. Um... <laughs> I know that Abby or Care Bear is usually a Zerg player, but this is kind of overkill. Like, what is he doing back here? He's going for five barracks. He's built more turrets than I think he has marines. There is a big amount of marines on the map, but this is so many turrets. Like, I could understand if maybe he scanned a little bit earlier and saw more Sunkens, but this is not that many Mulelisks. And I mean, the Mulelisks are not going to be able to do anything now. I mean, it almost feels like a bit of a waste. He's going to be late on his factory. Uh, there's no actual factory on the way yet, and he's even adding more turrets here. And funnily enough, the Muirs... Oh my god, the Muirs can actually attack the barracks from here, and there's nothing Abby can do about it. Uh, sorry, nothing... Yeah, nothing Abby can do about it. Oh man, that's actually kind of funny. Gonna force some of the Marines back. Uh, the Muirs getting caught between a rock and a hard place, though. He's gonna have to fly past a lot of turrets to get out of the base. But here we go, does... Uh, does Hermu actually have enough to hold on to his bases here? And uh, this is going to be a very, very dangerous position for Hermu. He doesn't actually have that many units. His uh, Mulus, as you can see, are pretty bruised from all the turrets. And when plus one finishes, looks like he's not. he has got plus one. He's going to push in, and this could be a very, very quick, decisive push by Care Bear. Maybe this is why he's going for TVZ on this map. Uh, but here we go. Looks like he's doing a really, really good job. The Mulus coming in, going to try and micro down some of the Marines. Is it going to be enough, though? This is a lot of damage going down on top of the Mutalisks. Really nice target firing. But with the links, this should be enough to hold this off. And what a fantastic hold it is. But what is Hermu going to do about his third base? He's getting up here. All of the Marines and the Medics are going to be cleaned up. And no, the three Medics going to be enough to keep those Marines alive. And of course, that was only round one. Round two is still to come. There's so many Marines, so many Medics. That is the benefit of going for this plus one five racks. Interestingly, we do finally have the starports coming up. I was about to say there's no starports here. Uh, but if Care Bear really wanted to, he could actually just push in and maybe end the game here. Looks like the Marines did push in to try and do some more damage. Didn't really get too much done. And the Lurkers have chased away the Medics, but here we go. Round two has been activated. 
Hermu is going to have to get some defense over to his third base if he wants to hold on to it. Of course, it is a small ramp. As you can see, we do see that scan going down here. Uh, where is he actually scanning? So he scanned the other base as well. He's not seen these lurkers, though. If these lurkers can borrow, this is going to be huge. But no, he's going to be able to get in before the lurkers borrow. And of course, the marine medic's going to be pushing him from the high ground. Looks like he is going to try and push down. The lurkers were not stacked, so he is going to be able to target them down. And this third base, unfortunately, is not long for this world. A lurker does come in behind from somewhere. Uh, will not be able to hold this, this army off, though. And unfortunately, this third gas is going to go down very, very quickly. Of course, though, with the lurkers at the top of this ramp, it's going to be hard to break back out of this base. And it looks like we do have a couple of lurkers, a couple of links going in for a counterattack. But look at the macro of Care Bear doing a really, really good job so far. But the third base going down for Hermu. Third base up now for Care Bear. Looks like we do actually have a scan on top of the ramp. He knows that this is a possibility. He is, of course, a Zerg player himself. So he is completely aware of any tricks that could be coming on. A nice usage of the turret over here, not to only deter overlords from sitting over this location, but also to block any uh, any hatcheries from going down. It's going to take a long time for the Zerg player to clear that out. Uh, do we have SK Terran on the way? We actually have two uh, two vessels building at a time, Irradiate on the way as well. Interestingly, no... Um... Oh, these are stop lurkers. Oh, he's trying to... Oh man, he's trying to bring all of the Marines over to these. Of course, Care Bear does not know these exist. He's not Flash. He's likely not going to scan this, although uh, moving the uh, links there, obviously, I could actually pull this off. Looks like our Hydral is going to go down to clear out this turret, possibly build a uh, egg on the ramp. Looks like it's actually just going to be for Lurkers. Uh, he's going to be a bit disappointed when he sends a drone there, by the way. Uh, he's not going to be able to take that. We have a fourth base coming up on the way for Care Bear. Does he have any additional barracks on the way? Yes, he does. So this is going to be the SK Terran style. He's not going to be building any uh, any factories and any uh, tanks, at least, for the moment. Of course, he is only on two gas, not even opting to add the third scanner, which is a very, very questionable decision. A uh, scan is very, very important in TVC, very important for Terran in general. Uh, but Care Bear showing that he's no pushover when it comes to Terran. Looks like we will... Oh, man, that turret is some next-level next level stuff. It's going to detect... The Lurker that is killing it, just so the SUV can dart in and kill the Lurker. Let's do it. Let's do it, Care Bear. Oh, man. Lame. <laughs> oh, he's... Oh, he irradiated the, um... Irradiated the Lurkers, didn't he? No, he didn't. Oh, man. The Lurkers got away before they got radiated. That's a bit unfortunate for, uh, Care Bear here. But he did know that there was some, uh, stop Lurkers there eventually. Looks like we're going to have a lot of scans going down, trying to find the army, and that's why the third scanner is so, so important. Oh my god, this could be huge. This could be a lot of damage. Actually, activating the stop left is at the wrong time. They're in a little bit of a bad position, but they're going to do a lot of damage to the army here. And a very, very nice lurker spine. It's actually not getting too many kills. Only six. Uh, but it will do a decent amount of damage. Two of the lurkers will go down immediately to irradiate, though. And interestingly, on borrowing them, going to do some extra damage to this lurker. Uh, but Care Bear going to be able to secure his fourth base. We have the third base finally coming up for Hermu, but he is very, very far behind. We have Hive Tech done and ready. Defiler Mound is done as well. We have a Defiler. It does not have Consume yet, it doesn't look like, because he isn't on full energy. Uh, we should have Consume and uh, Play coming up very shortly if we don't already. Uh, but looks like we do have 1-1 one, one on the Marines. Do we have a second Engineering Bay back in the Terran space? Yes, we do. Going for those 2-2 two, two upgrades. Very strong on the Marine Medic. We actually have a lot of units being pumped out here as well. I just want to point out how good the... Oh, man. I mean, I, this is really, really good. Like, there's no way this is going to get... Oh, it's going to get scarred now. Surely. Oh, man, it's still... Oh, how on earth? Oh, there we go. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, looks like the vessel is going to try and pop in. Gonna try and irradiate the Defiler. Doesn't quite get it. Really nice defense. Oh, one of the vessels goes down to a Scourge. Nice hit. Having to use the, uh, use the irradiate on one of the Lurkers. Would have wanted to get that Defiler at the back. And Swarm should be done very soon. Looks like Consume is done now as well. Is I mean, Swarm must be done at this point, right? But here we go. Looks like we actually have a Nidus Canal. And a Lurker shooting down. At, well, the Nidus Canal isn't shooting. But the Lurker is gonna attack the Barracks. And that SCV going to run away to live another day. Now, the thing is, Care Bear has a lot of units. 
but it doesn't look like he's really sure what to do with them as he gets to the late game. He's obviously got his fourth base. No scanner, as we can see once again. Does he have a scanner on his third? No, he doesn't. Uh, you can see many things that... There's a lot of Zerg flair in his Terran play right now, uh, but there's also a lot of lack of Terran experience coming into play. Lack of scans can lose you the game as Terran, so you really can't hold back on those scanners. One of the best, or one of the main reasons, in fact, like Stork even claimed to Saggy was the fact that scanners existed, even though he gets observers. But still, uh, Stork a known whiner, but still a really, really good player, so can't hate on him too much. I guess one of the reasons why he's not gone for a tank is how on earth is he going to get his units out of his base. I think he's even trapped his SUVs in at this point. This SUV is stuck behind the turrets. Can't really do too much. Looks like we are going to see a push into the third base that uh, Barracks is finally going to go down. Oh, nice irradiate at the bottom of the ramp. How much is going to be here to defend? He's going to have a defiler. It does have plus one carapace, plus uh, no upgrades other than plus one carapace at the moment for Hinamu. Uh, but here we go. Looks like a fank swarm. Gonna go down the... Oh man, the Lurker does get into the Swarm, but takes a lot of damage. Not the best Swarm there, I wouldn't say. Uh, there's only one Lurker to defend this. He's gonna be able to get the Nidus Canal immediately. And once again, this third base is gonna go down. Looks like we have another engagement over here on the left. Hermu trying to split up his army. Not gonna go too well. Uh, third base has gone down, and Hermu is so far behind right now. He's gonna try and play as cost-effective as he possibly can. But how on earth is he going to deal with this? A Hydralisk trying to take the base. Actually hiding all his units at the top of the base. Making sure there's no hidden Nidus or anything up here. Uh, just to be sure, Command Center going up as well. And he's going to be building the Command Center here soon. Care Bearer is in such an unsurmountable lead right now. He's not even had to use any drops. And unfortunately... Um, I mean, it looks like Care Bear's going to take this first game. Two of the Defilers actually went down there. Another drone does go down. I think there was actually a drone burrowed here as well, goes down as well. Hermu is going to go for one last ditch attempt at a counter attack. He's going to get the Lurkers on the high ground. This is going to be pretty good. But there is going to be Marines coming in from two sides. But does he have any scans? That is the question. Oh, the Defiler gets caught out. And that is huge. He needed that Defiler for the Swarm. Uh, looks like we are actually going to have some units being caught off here as well. Uh, I mean, this is just such a good position for Hermie to take, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too late in the game. He's lost his third, and as soon as this army gets there, I think he's going to lose his natural. There's actually a battle cruiser. LOL is called, and this 1BC with three kills gets plagued, but it does take two full plagues, I think, to actually get a battle cruiser to one health. Of course, uh, the swarm does nullify that. I did actually miss the uh, breakout there by Care Bear, but I don't think it really matters. I just really want to look at this battle cruiser killing things. Two BCs actually in the field now. They're going to actually attack this. And GG! Unfortunate. What the? Oh my god. Herbu left on one of his things spawned as blue because it was neutral, and one was orange. That's actually really cool. <laughs> he was playing his two characters. <laughs> but. There we go, that was actually a really cool game. Care Bear showing he's actually got really, really strong Terran. I'm going to have to make sure I edit his TBZ stats to be plus one there. Uh, but that was a really, really nicely played game by him. He pretty much just uh, outclassed Hermu there. A little bit unfortunate for Hermu, of course, but a really, really cool game. Glad we got to see that one. That was actually a lot of fun. And we are going to move on to the second game. I'm just going to report that game to make sure that that isn't uh, forgotten. Because sometimes I have gone through and uh, sort of missed reports. And that's probably why the uh, stats are so messed up. But here we go. Let's quickly report that game. That is, of course, the first game in the series. So there's a lot more games to come. A possible of four games. A maximum, a maximum of four more games. Uh... Otherwise, it may just be another three, but we're not really too sure about that. Let's see if uh, Foreign Brood War can bring this back to the ace match. Of course, they did win their first game. Uh, Rev did win one, lose one as well, so let's actually report that. Let's bring up the intro as I load up the next replay, and let's get everything ready for our second game in the series. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and see you all in just a moment. Uh, I need to make sure I'm loading up the right replay as well, so see you soon.
Okay guys, welcome back. I know you guys don't like the theme, I'm gonna see if I can work on fixing that, but it's hard to find good royalty-free music, if we're being honest. Uh, I thought it fit the fit the theme of the thing. I, I mean, I've not really seen too many people complaining about it so far, uh, but I do have the second replay loaded up. Just gonna finish generating the overlay, and then we can have a look at who the players are gonna be. Uh, luckily enough, I don't actually need to change the position of the players, so that's kind of cool. Actually, yes I do. That was a mistake. Okay, so let's actually just fix that. And we can go into the next game. I don't want to keep people waiting too much. Uh, but it's going to be... I got the colors wrong again. You know what? Uh, doing an overlay is hard, guys. Don't do not do it. It just causes more grief. Just just do like the gather thing that Sail used to do and just type it all in a notepad. It makes it so much easier. Uh, but okay, let's actually bring up the overlay now. Let's have a look at who the players are going to be. And let's see what matchup we're going to see as well. So heading on over to the overlay, finally up to date. We do have... Start well in our second series here. Faust is going to make his second appearance, and incomplete the captain of Rev is going to make his first appearance in games. He is a Protoss player, so we're going to have another TVP. Uh, but never fear, guys, there is another Terran game coming up. I know Eskia does like uh, I uh, I know that um. Eskia does like his Terran games, but CVP is still very, very exciting, and it is Faust, one of the most unconventional players. We did see him go for a crazy evolution chamber all-in uh, in his Judgment Judgment Day game last time. Oh, I can't say that with a straight face, but it wasn't meant to be, but you know what? That was a very fun game. Hopefully, Faust was a little bit less tired when he played this game. Yeah, the trick is not to have VODs, but... Uh, you know what? It's uh, better than nothing. Um, I mean, I could technically put whatever theme, but having it as a having it as a video makes it a little bit easier for me to handle everything. And we are going to be moving on to. Okay, I forgot to bring my water in. Uh, we actually have the second map. It's going to be Polaris Rhapsody. It's going to be a PVT so far, showing in uh, SCPL to be pretty balanced uh, in PVT and CVP. Pretty cool map overall, as I said before in the previous series. 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock bases. Double gases in the top right and the bottom left. These cool high ground pods sort of split the map into three segments. And you have these small bridges actually blocking the uh, middle of the map. So very easy to stop the opponent from going through the middle. Uh, no buildable terrain in the middle as well, if I remember rightly. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, buildable terrain to the sides on the third and the fourth base. Of course, there are two other mineral only bases in around about the three o'clock and nine o'clock positions. And we have the three o'clock and nine o'clock uh, gas bases as well. So lots of bases to take on this map. Uh, lots of gas to be mined as well. And lots of minerals. Uh, probably the highest concentration of mineral uh, mineral only bases on a two player map I think I've actually seen. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to be proven wrong. I I guess, no, because Plasma is the three player map. You know what, I think this does have the most mineral only bases. There's four of them on the two player map. Of course the double gas does make up for that. And they're very, very nicely placed. But let's not waste too much time. Let's get into the next game. And let's see exactly how this game is going to play out. Is Faust going to play a little bit more standard this time? Is Incomplete going to make a good first debut match for his team? Let's find out. Okay, we have, starting us off in the 10 o'clock position, we have the Purple Protoss. It's going to be Incomplete Rev. And his opponent starting us off in the 5 o'clock position. It's going to be the Blue Zerg, also a captain for his team. He is the captain for Foreign Brood War. It's going to be SEC's Faust. Well, apparently Bisu has a 70% win rate on this map. In uh, Is that in PVC? <laughs> oh, there's the clip. Watch that clip, guys. That was a really, really, really funny game. Uh, but Faust actually played a really funny game that day on Judgment Day. Uh, he said he was really tired. I think he's going to try and make up for it this week. Uh, he did put himself back in the lineup even after that showing. He wanted to show that he isn't just a crazy cheesy player who plays really tired. Uh, he's going to try and do the best he can to prove everything. 
Uh, but yeah, Protoss are pretty good on this map, but of course we are not completely low level players. There are some really top foreigners here, but uh, it does, the balance is pretty different here compared to the uh, pro, pro days. And also the map has been figured out a lot more over the years. Of course, this map hasn't really shown up too much uh, since its pro league days, but I think it was in an MSL as well. Uh, but still, it's a pretty good map. Looks like um, Faust actually going to go for a 9-pull with a gas trick to get that extra drone up a little bit quicker. Not really sure if that's really that great economically. Looks like incomplete rev. Going to have a little bit of a better wall uh, than we saw in the previous PPC on this map. So I know if uh, Rota is going to be watching here, uh, he'll be feeling pretty happy with that wall. And Cadenzi will be as well because she was watching it before. In a little bit of disgust there in the previous series, but the wall still worked out, so well worth checking out the bots if you haven't already. Now, just while there is a little bit of a lull in the game, I just want to make it clear once again uh, that there are Macherino codes in the um, in the chat. So if you do exclamation mark donate, uh, there is a code you can put into Macherino which will donate a single dollar to the prize pool. Uh, that will be distributed across all of the teams at the end of the tournament. Of course, there will be first, second, third, and fourth place prizes. But there will be the consolation prize of 1% of the prize pool for the bottom 10 teams left in the tournament. Just to give people an incentive to stay along till the end. Uh, There's going to be a four round tournament. So hopefully by the end we're going to have a fairly chunky sized... Um, Prize pool should be a lot of fun if we do get there, and I'm hoping a lot of the teams stick around. I want to see some rivalries form and things like that. So, it uh, looks like we will have Forge, Nexus, Cannon, Cannon, no, Forge, Cannon, Nexus, Cannon, Gateway. Uh, that ca the second cannon just there to help defend against any possible links. Uh, but it wasn't a crazy ling all in. Looks like we will have Faust playing incredibly standard here. Going to take that third base at the mineral only. Uh, pretty good for him. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my water with me, uh, so I'm not going to be able to sort of get that for the time being. I don't want to miss anything important early game. And uh, maybe if we get a little bit of a lull, I'll quickly run off to my kitchen. It's it's quite close. I live in like a little bed sit. It's not a prison. Uh, it is a bed sit, as we call it in the UK. So it's a bed sitting room, so I don't have a lounge or anything. Uh, but it's all good. I enjoy living here. It's quite fun, even if my door does look like a prison. Uh, the third base does have no gas, but there is a double gas in the bottom corner, and it is defended by a very small ramp, which you can actually wall off. So that is one of the cool features of this map. <laughs> Thank you uh, very like much. I like your style, friend. Thank you very much for the subscription, HJ uh, Kasai. I probably can't say that name right, but I do apologize. But thank you for supporting the SCPL and supporting me. It means a lot, buddy. And uh, welcome to the club. I know Zero, whenever whenever he gets a subscription, he's like, welcome to the BSL or something. But I don't have like a cool partner icon or anything. So you're just going to have the normal uh, Twitch subscription. Looks like Faust. Going to add on a lot of links out at the front. Just going to um, just gonna see what he can be doing. Just going to try and put a little bit of pressure on the Protoss. Make sure, keep him honest. Going to make sure he leaves the Zealots back here to defend as well. And uh, the probe going to see everything that's going on in the bases. I'm not sure if Incomplete, yeah. So Incomplete has actually seen the third bases. Probe does go down to these plucky Zerglings. Three kills on this Ling. Uh, that must be three different probes as well. So really, really nicely done by him. We have a Stargate on the way. Cybernetic score as well. Most likely we'll see... Uh, Templar tech again. Of course, it may be a little bit harder for the Protoss player, uh, but there is the third bases that you can take in the right side and the left side of the map. They're going to have gas as well. Uh, they are going to be a little bit further away from your main bases, but still pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Okay, so... Wait, you say what's the scores? It should say in the top, right? Yeah, it does. Oh, man. I have it wrong. My apologies, guys. I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, jeez. That, <laughs> that kind of sucks. That's a big mess. That's going to require me to go into my database after this and fix it. How did I manage that? Oh, no. <laughs> That's such a pain to fix as well. Looks like we actually have... Like a cannon attacking something, but I can't figure out what it is. Here we go. Second gateway is up on the way now. What? 
what is oh there's a dragoon here okay that's a very quick dragoon but it is gonna um he's killed one of the overlords already and he's gonna kill a second one as well <laughs> oh my god this is so funny like the dragoon having to run the whole way around to attack this he may as well have waited for the corsair uh, but Faust with a lot of units now. He's building a lot of Hydralis, of course. He does have four drones at his uh, at his third base. It is a mineral only. There's going to be four drones at his natural as well. And about nine drones in it. Sorry, eight drones in his main. So this is not that many drones. He could be looking to do a very quick Hydralis bus. Not doing the most common one, uh, which is the 973, I believe it is. Or it might be 953 uh, is probably more likely. But he does have a saturation a little bit off for that, but it should still work. There's a lot of hydrals on the way. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, I can't actually quite check who that is. I've missed it on my overlay, uh, but thank you for that. It does mean a lot to me. Uh, looks like we will have Faust just sitting out here with his hydralis. Of course, it's going to be a while before we do have Templar tech on the way. There is a uh, zealot leg speed. Is there any Templar tech at all at the moment? It doesn't look like there is. This is quite a dangerous play. For um, our Protoss player to be making. Yeah, still no Templar tech. Gonna go into another gateway. I'm not gonna go into a Robo either, but he is going for Zealot Leg Speed, so he could be going for a plus one Zealot attack. Kind of interesting that he did build the Dragoon early on. It, of course, did allow him to clear out that Overlord a little bit quicker. Uh, but here we go. Looks like the Hydralis bus has come into effect. He's gonna try and snipe the Forge before plus one is finished. He doesn't seem to be target firing very well, though. The probes have been pulled. He knows that he needs to pull these probes to save the cannons. But I almost feel like Faust isn't target firing correctly here, and he loses a lot more Hydralisks than he maybe should have done. But a lot of probes have gone down for it incomplete right now. And that is a very, very huge moment in this game. Really nice defense by incomplete. He does lose a lot of probes. But of course, back home, it looks like a... Faust hasn't really been droning too much either, so the economy of the Zerg player isn't that great right now. Uh, once again, it looks like my follow notification hasn't popped up, but thank you very much for the follow. I don't know if my notifications are just going kind of whack at the moment, but... Uh, oh, there we go, it did appear, but I was a little bit too slow to notice it. Either way, thank you very much for the follow, it does mean a lot. And it uh, looks like we are going to see a big set of drones being built here by Faust. Faust adding his uh, hatchery in his Evo chamber just to try and set up a little bit of a wall, but this may be a little bit late. There's no sunken here, and it looks like Winsdale at leg speed coming into play, and uh, plus one's going to be coming into play soon as well. He's going to try and do some damage here. The one Dragoon, once again, actually on three kills right now, showing it's actually pretty strong early game if you use it correctly, uh, but the drone's trying to block... The uh, Zealots from getting on top of the Hydral is not going to be able to do it. And this is going to be such a big win for Incomplete if he can manage to do it. Uh, but here we go. It looks like we are going to have the... Uh, the Hatchery may even go down here, actually. Um, in this case, we do have the drones being pulled back to try and help drill the units off of here. He's going to take down the Evolution Chamber. There is not going to be any spores being able to be built and no upgrades for a very long time. Hydralis and drones going to try and hold on to the base. Is it going to be enough? I don't think it is. The drones are going to go down slowly but surely. And the Hydralis being absolutely shredded to mincemeat by these plus one zealots. And once again, the drones are sent back to the natural. Looks like we do actually have some Hydralis trying to move in to delay some of the units. But that is kind of inconsequential given the fact Incomplete is so high on supply right now compared to his Zerg opponent. And he is going to get two hatcheries here in a very, very strong attack. And Faust, as someone pointed out on chat, is on 1k gas on the two bases right now. He looks like he's going to try and take the third base. But the uh, third base for Faust... Uh, sorry, that's incomplete going for the third base on the double gas. But uh, Faust has lost all of his hatcheries at his third base. He's got his third hatchery in his main still. Uh, but this is not going to be enough. It looks like he may have enough to hold on against the Zealots. Really nice target firing here. No upgrades, of course, on the Hydralis, but will be enough to deter the Zealots for now. But how on earth is Faust going to return into this game? Looks like we do, as I suspected, have the third Nexus coming up at the Double Gas. As you can see, it does have 5,000 gas there, so pretty good. does get you that gas a lot faster, given the fact you do mine 
uh, 16 gas at a time from that base as long as it's fully saturated and here we go looks like we even have a dt gonna try and block the uh block the bridge this is gonna be very annoying for faust of course he can run past it but he doesn't have an overlord anywhere near here i don't even think he has overlord speed uh, so even though, oh, there we go, he's getting overworld speed now, so that'll at least allow him to deal with the DTs a little bit later on, but this DT has forced an entire army of about, I believe that must be about 20 supply, maybe 30 supply of Hydralis back over the bridge on its own. Uh, if you don't think DTs are in the, uh, Artosis was right, guys, look at that. One DT completely mitigating, like, 30 Hydralis there. And uh, please do not insult the players, guys. Uh, not very fair on them. They are putting on a show for you here. So uh, I would prefer if you didn't sort of say any bad words about them or insult them. Of course, you can criticize their play, but uh, it's not very good to call people stupid and things like that. Because the way I have always lived is please treat people the way you wish to be treated. So uh, looks like the DT going to come in, going to take down this third base uh, drone once again. And there's actually a DT in the main. Sorry, I actually got seven kills. I did actually miss that. Looks like the shuttle did go in. A little bit hard to see purple on this map, moving over the mini map while I'm trying to focus on everything else. But it was only seven drone kills. Of course, that is quite a lot. The uh, Overlord must have helped against that. But here we go. A big, big army. Moving in for incomplete. Uh, looks like my phone is going off. That is going to have to wait for now. I will uh, quickly make a phone call after this game. I'll put it on silent as well. Uh, but here we go. We actually have Faust with a lot of Hydralis now. It looks like he's going to go for a counterattack. He needs to be careful. There's going to be a lot of Storm in play here. We actually have nearly two Storms on a lot of these High Templar here. And here we go. It looks like he's going to do a very, very good job actually dodging those Storms. And this is very, very good for Faust, but... It doesn't seem there's enough. He's down to 50 supply against the 113. But this is a really, really nice engagement. Trains very, very nicely. And I think there's actually more uh, more thingies than, oh, more uh, Hydras than drones right now. There's a lot of damage being done in the natural. There's going to be another drop off the DT in the main as well. You can see a High Templar there. Probably went for a High Templar drop. One of the High Templars going down here. There's, of course, a lot of cannons on this base. They're uh, going to make it a little bit harder for Faust to be able to really push in. Uh, but it looks like he's going to try and go for the main. He thinks he has enough to flick the switch and go for the throat. Now, the drones did get pulled away once again. The uh, Zealot finally cleaned up. But here we go. Looks like the uh, Hydral is going to try and move in to the front of Incomplete Space, trying to catch him before he can remax. But this is so many cannons. So many Zealots, the Zealots actually on plus two attack, and GG! Rev is gonna take their second game in this series, and take uh, Rev up 2-0. Now, unfortunately, my overlay is wrong, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few minute break, just to actually fix that. Uh, it won't be too long, I just basically need to uh, reset up the overlay, it shouldn't take me that long, so uh, please don't worry. I will be back very soon, I'll report the result of this game after... Uh, and I will see you guys in just a couple of minutes. It won't be long. And uh, thank you, Shoko, for the follow. Uh, it does mean a lot. Okay, let me just quickly set up the timer. I'm going to give myself three minutes to do this. It shouldn't take me that long, but I can go and get my... Um, I can go and get my drink as well, so... Okay, let's actually quickly update that. Just going to mute my microphone for just a second. We'll leave the uh, Brood War music running for a second, and I'll see you guys soon.
Okay guys, I am back. I am just going to work on getting the next replay loaded up. Um, hopefully you don't mind the waiting around too much. I've fixed the overlay. It's going to have the correct scores. Care Bears win has properly been recorded as Terran as well. And we are going to move on to our next game. Which will be on Grand Line SE. Should be pretty cool to see this. It's going to be a ZBT. Uh, non for uh, we'll see this in just a second so no real need for me to uh, spoil that uh, but let's actually just quickly load up the replay then I can show the intro and we can get in to the next game okay here we go let's actually load this I'm gonna load the replay first because it sometimes lags out my video if I'm trying to uh, play that at the same time as loading the map and it'll allow me to just finish off the overlay settings and there we go so that's all loaded let me throw up the um, the thing, I'm gonna pause this music, see you in just a moment, guys. Oh, that's actually, there we go. Okay guys, as I said, let's get ready with the next game very quickly. Okay, so this is going to be a game for uh, Foreign Brood Wars a Life in this series. It's going to be between fighting for all an Al oh, sorry, fighting for Foreign Brood War. All an Alti is going to make his debut in the STPL. That's going to be a lot of fun to see how he plays. And he is going to be against Non, a very strong Terran. So this could be a very interesting match to see. And the map of choice for this uh, this one here is going to be on Grand Line SE. Now Grand Line SE, a very cool map. Four corners, four player map. Two island bases on nine and three o'clock. Uh, mineral only thirds, so kind of like um, Circuit Breaker. Nothing too crazy there, and of course you do have gas bases at 12 and 6. Uh, I think they're full gases on all the bases, so nothing crazy like that or anything. Now TBC so far throughout the tournament has shown to be pretty favoured for Terran, uh, but more favoured for Zerg over Protoss, and very, uh, very even, although there's only been two games for PBT. Uh, we're going to see a TBZ here, so let's see how Non is going to uh, how Non is going to approach this game, and how Alti is going to approach this game, knowing his team is 2-0 down. It's all or nothing. This is match point for Non. If Non wins this, they will win the series, of course. If they do win the series and there's a fourth game, I will cast it. I've said that before. I will cast every single game that gets sent to me to do with the STPL, so don't send me random games because I don't really have enough time, unfortunately, for that. But I would happily set up another day to, uh, to cast those if I had some more time. But... I need a break every once in a while. Uh, let's actually head on over to the game. Let's pause this music and let's get going, guys, with the third game of the series. Okay, just wanted to double check. I'm dead. Whoop, this is the wrong screen. Glad I checked. There we go, we have the GLHF coming up for Alti or Alan. I'm going to call him Alan because that's what he. That's what he says. It's Alan, Alan Dalty is what his name is, but his capitalization is all over the place and makes it really confusing. So he is going to be known as Alan. But to start us off in the bottom left position, we do have the Red Terran fighting for Rev. It's going to be Non. And spawning as his opponent as the Green Zerg. Nice color contrast here. I do apologize if we do have any colorblind viewers. Hopefully this doesn't make this uh, too difficult for you. But it's going to be our Green Zerg fighting for Foreign Brood War uh, All-Stars. It's going to be Alan. Now, as I said, this is match point for Non. A lot is riding on this map 
uh, this map for Allen and um, FBW. Of course, they did lose. No, wait, did they win their first game? I can't remember. I've seen so many games recently that it's kind of hard to keep track of all of them. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is sort of do or die for Allen now. He's going to have to show a good showing against Non. And that is going to be difficult. Non is a very, very good foreign Terran player. And it looks like Non is going to go for a normal build. Possibly going to go for a... I mean, surely he's not going to go for a uh, 14cc. He's going to go for a 14cc. Non is playing incredibly ballsy. Actually, a 9 pool coming up for Alan. This could be a very, very cheeky win for Alan here. Uh, but just to answer you, Micro DK, uh, basically each team captain submits me a lineup the week before. Uh, I announce the maps like a little bit before play day of the previous week, and then they get me the matchups for Monday. Oh man, Alan! Alan didn't build his Overlord. Oh no, this could be pretty bad. But then again, he is going to be able to build this um, build this hatchery. So going to be nine pool into a ten hatch. Uh, this is actually. Starting to gain a little bit more traction, I've seen 10 hatcheries in CBT uh, from watching like pro streams and everything. Uh, but basically, uh, the captains send me the lineups and everything. They get announced before the play day, then they play either before uh, the play day, after, just slightly after the play day, or on like the default time. It looks like we're going to have a 14cc into two barracks. For non, very, very important that you get those two barracks up as quickly as humanly possible, or these links can ruin your day. Uh, but that supply block into the late Overlord may have actually cost Alan a very, very quick win. Uh, looks like the links are going to move across the map, going to see what they can try and do. Uh, the, I believe non just saw the Overlord, so he's going to know exactly where his opponent spawned, and unfortunately for Alan, he is not. So he did not notice the SCV. And as you can see, the links have been split up. Now, this is going to be very, very good for uh, Non. He's going to be able to pull his SCVs back to the ramp, knowing that there is links on the way. And as you can see, he pulls them back immediately back into his main. He's going to stop them on the ramp. He has a Marine now. His first two barracks have finished. And this could be a very, very quick and well-made defense for, uh, for Non, actually. Now, the good thing is... Alan isn't going all in. He's actually started to drone up at his bases. We should have a couple of drones coming up with the natural. He's adding on a third hatchery. Of course, uh, Non is going to be able to scout this with the SCV and everything. Uh, but there will be a bunker coming up at the natural as well. Just making sure that he's perfectly safe. He does scout that there is three hatcheries. But there are variants where you do go for a crazy three hatch speedling all in. Uh, I've actually died to that on ladder before. And it is uh, very, very... Very annoying to die to. So you do need that bunker uh, very quickly, especially if you go for a 14cc as well. Your marines are a little bit delayed. Uh, you, of course, do get the second barracks up very quickly, but it looks like we will have two racks academy coming in for, re uh, for non here. It doesn't look like we're going to see any five racks uh, from him. Uh, he would have built the engineering bay by now. But I can't help but feel the uh, the academy is quite late. I guess the this is probably going to be the academy. No, it's not. Where is the academy for... For non, looks like he's actually just going to push out with two racks, just of marines. And Alan, of course, hasn't, or is actually going to add two creep colonies on immediately. He is skipping drones to get a lot of links. Of course, the SCV is still alive in the main base. Going to scout the lair timing, uh, very important to do. Even going to be able to scout the second gas timing as well. And this second gas timing is going to lead to some mutilus play here by Alan. Uh, I'm not sure if non went down far enough to see that. Uh, but Non is in a very, very good position right now. He finally does have the Academy on the way. This is incredibly late for T-Rex Academy. Uh, his macro failing him just a little bit. Uh, his money actually quite high for a Terran player at this point in the game. Uh, looks like the SCV production hasn't been perfect, but you know what? Uh, none of us are. Brood War is an incredibly hard game. And even though Flash, the uh, best player in the world, does look mechanically perfect, even... even he, or even he makes mistakes every once in a while. This is just how difficult this game is. But you know what? It's a lot of fun. If you're watching this and you've not played Brood War before, please do not get put off by the fact it's a 1v1 game. It's not just a 1v1 game. There's a lot of team games you can play. A lot of used map setting uh, maps. That means basically like... Um, 
sort of mini game maps, I guess you call it, like a uh, similar to like Uther Party and Warcraft Three and stuff like that. There's team melee where you can team up with a friend and play the same same race or different races, but as the same like army as such. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with Brood War. Please do make sure to uh, tune in to the S2PL in future and all the other tournaments that are going on at the moment as well. There's so much going on in the foreign scene. It's not just the ASL. I know there's a lot of people that just tune in for the ASL, but please do not ignore the uh, the amount, the sheer amount of foreign players just like you. Um, maybe some of them starting out as the Coach Pupil League at the moment for uh, newer players. So maybe if you are coming into the game after watching the ASL, after seeing the uh, 20th anniversary stuff as well, uh, do check out the CPL, see if you can sign up to a team, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, but it looks like Non gonna add on some firebats before some medics here, which are kind of interesting. Uh, but he will have a fairly sizable army, gonna go up to four racks into a factory. This will allow him to take a very, very quick starport and vessels as well, while build up his marine medic count to the point he can use it to push across the map. Uh, but here we go, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a wasted sim to try and get his army together, trying to catch some of the units, but of course when you stim all of your marines like this, it's going to eat all of your medic energy slowly but surely, uh, but this is a lot of units moving across the map, I don't think there's really anything too big to actually be able to uh, find this out, and it was an impact for a mutilus play, it was for lurkers, he is going from lurkers straight into the queen's nest, now I'm not sure if this has actually been scouted, uh, by Rev, I didn't actually, or by Non even, I didn't see if he saw that, but looks like we had some links somehow getting into the base, doesn't look like they did too much. Uh, this actually happens, but here we go, looks like we will have a scan going down, it's going to see the fact that Lurkers are not done yet, they're almost done though. There is a very fine timing for Non to hit here, is he going to be able to bust? It looks like he's going to be able to do it, a scan has gone down, some links are going to buy some time, this is going to be enough for the Lurkers to get in. And that is going to be enough to actually force the army back from Non. A really nice lurker positioning as well. Get a leapfrog as lurkers forward. Make sure he doesn't see anything. Now, Non has actually scouted the third base. It is going to be in the location that's a little bit harder for the Terran to get to. Of course, uh, you can actually defend the top base with just um, lurkers on this bridge. Uh, but this is like down a small ramp or across the large ramp. But here we go. Alan moving out onto the map. Going to see what he can be doing. And uh, unfortunately, this third uh, base is probably going to go down pretty quickly. He actually lets it finish. There's even a missile turret going up at the top of the ramp, but here we go. Units actually getting caught out on the bridge. This is a lot of damage being done by the Lurkers. Really, really nice job by them. Not that many kills on them, but it almost feels like the army of... Uh, the army of Non has just been completely cut in half. We actually have a lot of units still sat in the bunkers. He's going to add his starport finally now. We should see the... Um, Okay, I, I don't know... Oh, I guess he paused it or something. He was saying go, but he mis, uh, mispronounced everything. But here we go. A oh my god, a bunker and a turret at the top of the ramp. Just to add insult to injury. He is going to be able to fall back to this. And how on earth is non get or is uh, Alan going to be able to get back to defend his base now? Of course, uh, he can save the third base if he does send enough units in. But there's no links here. And this third base is taking a lot of damage. Looks like we will have some units trying to come in to reinforce. Possibly going to go for a, a counter-attack, but here we go. Looks like he's going to jump on the bunker. Three lurkers going to be enough to deal with all of those. And the hatchery going to survive really nicely played by Alan there. Uh, we should have the hive already up. We do. We actually have... You know what, I don't actually know what that upgrade is. I think it might be Overlord Drop, but I, I really do not know from that icon. Hopefully someone in chat uh, will be able to... Wait, did I, I didn't... Oh, okay. You want Zoom Out. A lot of people don't like Zoom Out, so... Oh, it's Sight Range. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, chat. I have never seen that icon before, I don't think. I don't play Zerg, so... I look like we'll have units coming in from all sides here. Really nice usage of his units, but this is a really nice split there by Alti, but it's not going to be enough. One more Lurker does go down here, but it's not going to be enough to hold off this army. Here we go, we actually have a counter-attack coming into play. We should have a... There's a pre-split against the uh, Lurkers, but there's a lot of units in these bunkers. And that counter-attack is going to be completely foiled. 
And once again, how is Alan going to be able to deal with this? He doesn't... Oh, he finally has a Nidus up here. That is going to allow him to hold on for just a little bit longer. But his unit count is incredibly low. His lava usage hasn't been perfect. We actually have a Vulture coming out onto the map as well. Unlike Care Bear before him, he is going to switch into Mech. Or at least Mech... Or oh, he's going to build two, um, two factories worth of Mech units. That's actually pretty good. Four tanks. Uh, but Alan is going to have a lot of problems here. It looks like Alan sent some units up to the top left to defend against the uh, Vulture. Uh, but sending the things in, going down immediately. And he only has one, one Lurker to try and hold this ramp. And that is not going to be enough. Non's units are going to get up the ramp here. And this could be the very push that he does need to actually win the game. A uh, 5 Alan in front. Going to soak a lot of the damage. Going to leave the... Uh, oh man. How annoying is this? One Ling completely invulnerable under the swarm. It's gonna come out the swarm though. Oh my god, the Ling is doing so much damage even though the uh even though it's defended. Gonna try and target down the Nidus. Doesn't quite get it. Really nice defense here by Alan somehow. And here we go, another Lurker does go down, another load of units go down, and GG Non is gonna take a 3-0 victory for Rev in this series. Really, really nice played by Non there. Uh, of course, it's not over yet. There was a fourth game played. And as I said before, I am going to um, basically... I'm going to cast any games that were sent to me. So we are going to go into the fourth game here, of course. None do win the match overall, but there's going to be one more game at least. Uh, I shouldn't have... Yeah, hopefully I'm not showing the overlay right now. I think I'm showing me. It's all good. I just showed something like a really stupid screen that's not been set up properly. Uh, but I can sort that out afterwards. Let's quickly report this match. And we are going to head into the fourth and final replay of today. Once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. And we will be back very, very shortly. So let me just report the win for non. Let me get the next replay ready. And let me bring up the intro. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you shortly. Surely said that wrong. Either way, thank you. Yeah, very sorry for actually missing out on that question before, Tardad. I'm going to upload all the VODs from yesterday and today tomorrow. Uh, I finished quite late yesterday, uh, and I had to wake up really early this morning, so I couldn't upload them yesterday and today. I'm going to have a little bit of a rest after this, but let's head in to the final game. I have the replay loaded up. I'm just going to set up the final bits of the overlay, and then we can see the final game between Foreign Brood War and Rev, and it's going to be Tai 2 versus Zaz. So let me just quickly set up the overlay properly. Uh, I, th I believe it's going to be a ZVP, uh, but we do have Tai 2 over in the 8 o'clock position, Zaz in the 12 o'clock position. It's going to be red versus a color I can't actually see because everything is in the way. It's going to be red versus blue, so nice contrasting colors again. And that should be pretty good, but here we go. Okay, I messed up colors. It's all good. Let me just do that again. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't click OK. Uh, red versus blue. Let me bring up the other part of the overlay, and we can get going to have a look at the players, see what their stats are so far, and get into the game. So let's quickly bring up the overlay once again. Uh, my trusty overlay. As you can see, both of them did actually win their games in their first weeks, and the only times they've actually played in the tournament so far. Uh, Zoz playing Protoss, of course, for Clan Revolution. His team are up 3-0. Uh, Taitu is going to be looking to get a little bit of pride back into Foreign Brood War uh, All-Stars, of course. Foreign Brood War All-Stars, if you haven't heard of them, uh, they're a team made up of members. Uh, there's over 1,500 members of the Discord now, uh, but it is probably the biggest Foreign Brood War community outside of Team Liquid, so well worth a look. Uh, hopefully, people are going to be happy. 
and let's actually have a look at what map they're going to be playing on. We've seen it once before today, but I'm going to show the map again. Uh, it's going to be Neo Moonglaive. Of course, it's going to be a CVP three-player map. Uh, there's going to be four gas bases readily available for each player without needing to venture into the middle of the map. Of course, there's a big ramp and a small ramp leading down into the natural. Naturals are on the low ground. Middle of the map is on the middle ground slash high ground, I guess you could call it. Uh, we have around the outside, there's actually a gas base, a gas third, which has a pathway through to the natural, and a fourth a, you know, fourth gas a little bit further away. Of course, players don't have to expand in that direction. They can take the other main and whatnot. We did see that in the last game. And I get the feeling we're going to see that here. It is a ZPP, so very, very standard to go for another base. But let's hop on over to the game and let's get started, guys. Oh, I just turned the sound off, but here we go. Starting us off in the 8 o'clock position, we do have the Red Zerg fighting for Foreign Brutal All Stars, trying to get some, trying to get some pride in it, uh, is going to be uh, Tai 2. And yes, Foxhan, there is 1,500 members. Uh, it went up quite a lot after Artosis gave it, or Artosis and Rapid gave us a shout out, thankfully, on, um, on ASL, so really, really cool. But there are a lot less active chatters than there are lurkers, but it's a very good place to find games. Even if you don't want to join to chat, you can always read what's going on. There's good strategy discussion. Uh, there's a VOD channel, so people can post good VODs. And a lot of stuff going on. Big uh, big props to Rapid for actually shouting us out on the ASL stream. And Artosis for uh, talking about the fancy Brood War thing going on for ASL as well. Looks like we're going to have a Forge Fast Expand here for Zard's going to send his probe across the map to scout as soon as possible. And now the benefit of this is it does allow him to see if there's going to be a 12 patch. And will allow him to make a decision of whether or not he wants to build the Forge right away or if he will go into the gateway. Uh, he's going to scout in the correct direction to start with, so pretty good for him. Uh, looks like we are actually going to have a 9 pool once again coming up for one of the Foreign Brood War... Um, one of the Foreign Brood War Zergs. So Foreign Brood War Zergs, like in their 9 pool, into gas in CVP it would seem. Uh, of course, this is going to allow Zars to know uh, that he probably should get... I mean, he probably should get his Forge, right? There's no way he could skip the Forge here. Wow, he's actually going to build the forge on the left side. He does not want any units coming from here, but this is going to severely make his wall a lot weaker from the front. A kind of an interesting position on the wall. Uh, I know that Rota is going to be very, very unhappy with this wall positioning. Uh, it's certainly one of the most entertaining walls I've seen so far. Um, I mean, the Overlord's going to see that there's no wall here, and I mean, Taitu could probably just go straight into full links. And what on earth is Zoz going to be able to do about it? Looks like he's going to add one cannon at least. He should probably add a second cannon as well, uh, which he is. Uh, they're spread out pretty nicely, so it is going to be hard for Lynx to get on top of both at once. And the wall gets stranger. There is another gateway been added. I guess maybe he's trying to play tower defense with the Lynx. Going to funnel the Lynx through this gap into as many many cannons as possible but it's not really going to work now somehow the probe actually manages to evade the lings but he will of course not see the lings leave the base uh, will he add another cannon now the important thing to note here as well is because of this wall Zaz has had to um, delay his nexus a lot here he knows there's nine pool gonna have speed as well uh, but Taitu will be able to expand behind this as well he's not going full all in uh, the probe will scout the hatchery coming up, so he's going to feel pretty good about this. And wow, the wall is going to work. Look at this. I don't know if uh, Zoz somehow practiced this map with Taitu or saw some games of him playing it. But this nine pool is going to get completely blocked by the forge. What next level walling we have here from Zoz. Really, really nicely done. I mean, that would be a really good place for the, uh, for the Zerg player to go through. Uh, but... Oh man, that wall is so unfortunate for Tai too. He's actually going to have to fall back with his links. He's going to go back and uh, d defend, uh, basically, just to make sure he doesn't die to any zealots coming out of his base. Uh, but <laughs> that's some really next-level walling. But uh, 
I don't know, Tardad. Did he see the wall with the Overlord? Like, I, re I might actually rewind at the end of this. I don't normally rewind the replays. But I want to have another look to look at Taitu's vision. Now, usually, like, in Pro League and stuff, they would do, like, the playback where they'd go through the replay again and just show, like, the defining moments. Uh, but where there's just me, I find it quite hard to do that because there's, uh, there's not really much I can say other than what I've already been saying. So, <laughs> I, I mean, that's really, really unfortunate. It's so weird. We've got the um, we've got the Zerg music, and it's wait, is this Zerg music or is it Protoss music? I think it might be Protoss music. Either way, it's like so quiet compared to the Terran music. <laughs> Terran music is so in your face, and this music is this music reminds me a lot of the Night Elf music from WoW. Actually, I mean, I guess maybe that's where they got. Well, I guess the Elf music came. So the Elf music would have come after this, so or the Elf music even. That's uh, so a pretty cool song either way, like the music for Brood War is very, very, very good. So, um, looks like we'll have a very quick Spire. Going into two Hatchery, most likely Mutalisks here. Uh, Taitu isn't the most standard player in the world. He has got his own, uh, specific things here. But yeah, as, uh, Bush for Hyde said, pretty much the, um... I forgot what they're called. The Protoss are pretty much Space Elves. So, you know what? I guess it makes sense their music would sound like that. Looks like we will actually have a third hatchery coming up for Taitu. He's not going to go all in with Mutalisks. And uh, here we go. The Spire should be finishing up fairly shortly. Taitu has been doing a pretty good job droning off all of his bases. Uh, let's have a look at what Zoz is doing. He's getting a lot of uh, Zealots here, actually getting plus one upgrade from this forge. Maybe a little bit dangerous when Hydralis come into play. Uh, Hydralis should be able to bust down that pretty easily, but second gateway on the way. Citadel getting link, uh, leg speed as well for the Zealots. Just making sure everything's going on. Now, compared to a lot of the other games, this is, uh, this is quite a s slow paced game, I guess. We've finally got some movement from the Zealots moving out onto the map. Can I just make sure? I am on fastest. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't make that mistake again. Uh, but it looks like we do have some Scourge out too. Go and scout. They're not going to find any Corsairs. Interestingly, Zoz is planning on skipping Corsairs completely at the moment. And this could actually lead to Tai 2 building a lot of Mutalis. Now, how much damage is Zoz going to be able to do? Is he going to be able to scout the Spire? Of course, the Spire is in the main. Uh, but if he can get in, that would be pretty good. Scourge, of course, going to see that there's no uh, no units. Going to see the um, Templar Archives coming up as well. And I think Taitu is going to feel pretty happy with this. He's going to get his third base up completely free. We do have the Mutalus coming into play as well. Uh, one benefit that Taitu does have is I did mention this before, but um, basically there is a little bit of a co positional imbalance on this map. Uh, the 12 o'clock position... And, well, especially the uh, 7 o'clock position actually have insane amounts of airspace behind them. Uh, this one does as well. So, lots of places for the Mutalist to go in. I'm not sure whether or not uh, the Spire choice into Mutalist was a reaction to this for Tai 2. Or if it was going to be to do with the fact there's no Stargate. But either way, three gateways being added. Looks like we should have Storm on the way soon as well for the Templar. And looks like there is a lot of Zealots going to be moving across the map. Trying to force the Mutalist back. He does now see them. Uh, very, very important to know they're coming. Uh, probably going to see some cannons going up in the main and natural mineral line very quickly. We already see the ones in the main mineral line. There we go. Zealot's going to try and move in, do any damage they possibly can. Uh, the egg's actually working as a little bit of a wall here, but this could be a lot of damage from the Zealots. It takes so long for Mulis to actually do any damage to Zealots. So, really, really nice push in here. Looks like the Zealots are going to get cleaned up, though. And it doesn't look like they're even going to get the Sunken here. This is a crazy defense by Taitu. No, they get the Sunken. Very important movement in the game. And that's going to give Taitu a pretty good position, of course. The Zealots do get in the main as well. Going to scout. There's no Hive on the way. That would be an incredibly quick Hive, though, if there was. And it looks like Taitu just kind of macro up behind this. Finally, we do have the Scourge going back in. Checking for any, uh, any Photon Cannons. Of course, we do see the Archon. He couldn't wait for Storm. That's one of the big benefits. Now there's eight Mutalists on the way here. Is this going to be enough to uh, actually deal too much damage? Of course there's going to be... For oh my god, he's going to get the second cannon before it finishes. Cannons don't do that much damage to Mutalists. Although he should have really pulled the damage one back. He's going to be able to micro down these cannons. This is going to be huge. How is he going to defend against this? 
This is so much damage he's going to be taking. Looks like two of the Mutalists do go down. He flies away to get the turret of the Mutas out of range of that third cannon. Here comes the Archon. This is going to be a big linchpin in the defense here. Going to be very hard to micro against that. And here we go. Looks like Taitu is going to try and dart in behind the minerals. Going to be chased away by the Archon. And Rev so far with a pretty, oh sorry, Zoz with a pretty good defense at the moment. Now what do we have going on for Taitu? Once again, this is a pretty slow game. Uh, probably the slowest PvZ we've seen so far. Uh, we have a lot of Sunkens coming up. A hatchery, an evolution chamber to help create that wall. Uh, another Sunken being built back here. Now I can only worry that this is actually going to cause a lot of traffic jams here for the units. Now is he using the Scourge to tank shots? Because that would be very, very cool. But it looks like the uh, 6 mule is going to move in. Try and do any damage they can do. Of course, very difficult to actually do too much, but kind of interesting to see he's not trying to snipe this. Plus one attack is finished, of course. Uh, plus two is going to be on the way, but that's going to be very, very easy pickings for him, as it will be out of cannon range now. Zaz not making the same mistake that, um, the ink, wait, it wasn't incomplete on this map because it was the previous team. I can't remember who the Protoss player was. I think it was DM White. He's going to take that third base very, very quickly. But this is a very, very big army for Zaz right now. He's going to be moving in with a lot of Archons and a lot of Zealots. And with just Mutalists and not many of them, this is actually going to be very difficult to hold. Now, of course, he does have the three Sunkens. He has a couple of uh, Machine Gun Hydralists here. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for the Zealots to actually get there. He can even build those into units to uh, create a wall. But this is going to be a lot of damage here. Looks like Tai 2 is going to try and micro down the uh, Archons, but it's going to be very difficult. Finally, uh, those eggs were actually Lurker eggs. Nearly go down 10 health on both of them. But that will be enough to actually push the forces of Zaz back. And the game will continue on. Now, of course, the Scourge still out here. Still going to be able to fly in and go for a scout. There's now five gateways in the main, one in the natural. A Storm is finally developing. And there is a lot of links out on the map for Taitu. Does he have any upgrades? Not yet. So, of course, it is plus one attack against no upgrades. And that is not going to be a fight the Zerg player wants to win. And it, is, is Rev going to be really cheeky? Is he going to try and take another base here? Sorry, is Zoz even? You know what? That could be a dangerous precedent. But here we go. The Archon's actually pushing back to defend against the uh, Mutalists and the uh, Zerglings. Has Taitu scout this base? No, he hasn't. But as I say that, the map hacks kick in. He goes straight up. We'll see this. Uh, the cannons are actually incredibly late on this base, but the uh, Archon should be able to defend this for the time being. But Taitu could get a few cancels on the cannons. Does get the probe. And of course, this does leave the main completely open. There's a long, long distance of walking between the base and the main. Makes it very difficult to deal with air units popping between the two bases here. Uh, but pretty pretty good job for Tai 2 so far. He's keeping the Protoss back. He's going to be able to push into the third base. He's going to try and push in with the Lurkers. Uh, these are on full health, so they're not the same Lurkers as before. Uh, those back at home still trying to build up. But this one drone causing a bit of a traffic jam. But here we go. There's no Observer yet on the field. So these Lurkers are going to be doing a lot. Interestingly, he's using his uh, Mewers to push in with this. Kind of an interesting decision. Maybe it would have been better to wait um, for everything to come in. The Observatory finally is going to finish up. So kind of important for him. But here we go. We see the Dark Archon. Are we going to see a Maelstrom here? One of my favorite spells in the game. Doesn't really get used. I mean, another really cool thing to see would be a Mind Control Drone. But I highly doubt we'll see that. I just want to see it. Like, if you're watching and you've got a PvZ coming up, guys, drone, if you're watching, I know you're most likely the person to do this. Mind control a drone for me, come on. You can do it. Do it with an SCV as well. Nice Maelstrom, though, down on the Lurkers and the Lings, but there's just not enough of a Protoss army to really take advantage of this. That is about 90 energy, I think it is. Oh, no, he's going to throw away the Dark Archon. Please don't do it. Save the Dark Archon. He's going to send it into his cannon. Oh, that's fine. It's fine, the Observer is here now. Interestingly, sending his uh, Archon into death. Not going to wait for the Dragoons to clean this up. It looks like Dragoon Range isn't finished yet. Uh, does he even have Dragoon Range? Let's actually check the. Uh, I'll check out afterwards. Uh, but these uh, these Dragoons are actually having to walk into the Lurkers to do anything. Uh, kind of a bit unfortunate. Now, where is the um, Cybernetics Core? It looks like Dragoon Range must be finished now, right? 
unless he's forgotten it, but that would be a pretty big blunder. Dark Archon is safe and sound by his cannons. That is the Dark Archon's do domain. And uh, Dark Archons are a lot of fun, guys. Uh, if you ever want to see a cool game, on my YouTube channel, there is a game between Drone and or Liquid Drone and someone else. That's Area Door, in case you don't know his other, other nick. And it was on Neo Medusa, and it was one of the best PBZs I've ever seen. It was so much fun. Lots of Dark Archon usage, lots of Queen usage as well. And uh, just overall a really, really cool game. But here we go. Looks like the Archons not doing their job, not protecting their buddies there. Uh, but finally they do start to be able to do something. There's a lot of Zerg units moving in here. Here we finally see a swarm. This is going to make it very hard to hold onto this base. But there is going to be a Maelstrom. Oh, actually feedbacking the Defiler. Such a good move. I think it just consumed again. Uh, the Defiler has gone down. Really, really nice usage of that uh, feedback there. And that's only about 50 energy. So um, that's going to allow him to regen pretty quickly. Now funnily enough. Lurker under Swarm against Protoss, pretty invincible as well, uh, unless there is some Zealots in play. Now, what's going on back in the base of the Zerg player? We have the 4th base coming up, the 5th, uh, like, I think this is about the 6th or 7th hatchery. There's going to be a lot of macro coming out for Tai 2, he's doing a really good job with his macro right now. Another couple of Defilers coming in, what is going on in Zoss's base? We have his natural, nearly mined out, his main is going to be in a very similar situation. There is now 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven gateways uh, overall for the Protoss player on his three bases. Probably would be nice to see a, a robotics up here to start building some Reavers to defend against this. Uh, but we do have the Dark Archon. I just want to follow this guy around. Like, look how cool he looks. Like, you know what? I'm just going to zoom in. I don't care. Look at look at this. This guy is a total boss. He doesn't have those weird Archon legs. He's got, like, this weird scarf thing going on. And a weird, like, belt or something around his back. But let's actually zoom back out. We have a big Zerg force on the way. 1-1 one, one upgrades for the melee. Uh, 1 carapace for the ranged. 2-0 two, uh, two upgrades for the uh, Protoss player though. And there should be another Maelstrom coming in soon. And this could be a pretty important one. He may even go for the uh, feedback again. Looks like he wants to try and break it. He is going to wait and feedback. He does feedback it. Doesn't do enough. And, oh no, the Dark Archon's going to go down. That's so unfortunate. And all of Zoss's units getting trapped down here in the bottom left. They're not going to be able to break this base, I don't think. He's trying to trade as efficiently as possible. And not going to be able to do too much. The uh, Dragoon's going to try and kill this uh, Lurker, at least. But that is a big, big loss for Zoss here. And Tai 2 showing a very, very strong ZVP. And here we go. You know, I said about five minutes ago, is Zoz going to try and take this base? Well, here he is. He's taken it. And that is a very, very ballsy maneuver. He's going to try and take the uh, two o'clock base as well. And that is going to give him a good position in this game. Of course, you can get a lot of cannons. I'm not sure I agree with this push in. The Zealot's going to have to run away here. Uh, there's not really enough tech. That poor uh, Dark Archon has gone down. There's no Templar as well for Storm. And it looks like it's pulled the trigger. The Zerglings attacking with their adrenaline. They're doing so much damage. But uh, Zealots with two attack against only the one Carapace doing a very good job trading. But that was a very, very nice engagement there for Tai 2. His army size keeps growing and growing. He's ahead in supply of the Protoss player now. And that is a huge, huge disadvantage to be in. Of course, Protoss do have the tech advantage. He does finally have the Robo and the Reavers. It's almost like past him is listening to me. Uh, I did mention that. Uh, he should be building some Reavers in the main as well, most likely. Just to defend his natural, but will he add a Robo over here too? Uh, looks like we don't have the base coming up here. He's going to have to use a lot of his money to rebuild his army. I mean, this is such a cost-efficient army from uh, from Tai 2 right here. He's got a lot of very low-cost Lings. Defilers, the Lings do have Adrenaline. They have plus one attack and two Carapace. I don't believe there's actually any upgrades. There is one attack now, finally, for the, um, for the Hydralis. But here we go. We have a fifth base coming up for Tai 2 in the other main. Uh, we have this probe. Is going to actually scout this. Uh, so really nicely done by him. Uh, he's going to see the drone transfer as well. So kind of important to know this base is coming up. Of course he can't really do too much. Is he going to add a shuttle on? Is he going to go for uh, the all important Reaver drops in the late game? Where are the storm drops? Where is the harassment in general guys? It seems very very 
very barren in this game from the process where I think this is why it's felt like such a slow game. It's, we're 20 minutes in, uh, the Zerg and the Protoss are starting to expand a hell of a lot across the map. We finally have a Storm, but what is that Storm on? I think that was a misclick. Nice play, got a lot of the units though, and this Defiler nearly ran away as well. Unfortunate for Zars. Uh, Plague, obviously, a very, very cost-efficient spell in PvZ. Uh, if you don't know what Plague does, I know probably everyone watching the stream right now has actually seen Plague and seen at least one game of Brood War. And, uh, you know what? Um, Plague basically reduces the health of units to one, and Protoss health doesn't regenerate, but here we go. Nice storms, but another huge Plague there across all of the units... All of the units are going to be so close to death. Of course, the shields do regen, uh, but Protoss players don't often get the shield upgrades unless they're really far ahead, uh, like we did see in the previous PvZ between White and... Who was it between? It was White and somebody. Uh, I can't remember. Either way, it, like, it shows how hard it is to remember like previous games, but that was a previous set. That The VODs for those will go up tomorrow, but here we go. Looks like the Zerg, or looks like Tai 2 is going to move into a more of an aggressive stance, and he is doing a very good job, but this is very stacked up lurkers. Actually storming one of his own High Templar to death, and Reaver's here, but uh, Archon's unfortunately running straight into Lurker Fire. Do they actually hurt the Lurkers? I don't think they do under the Swarm, because the attack does go just in front of them. And now, of course, Tai 2 has a dominating position in the middle of the map. It's going to be very, very hard for Zoz to expand again, but equally, it's going to be hard for Tai 2 to actually push in. So we're going to see a little bit of a stalemate for now. Looks like we could have some drops coming in quite soon. Uh, drops would be very, very powerful. You can actually drop from here into the main with very little resistance, especially without, oh, especially with a lack of Corsairs. Now, how many gateways? We still have the, uh, we actually have another gateway now, so it's up to nine gateways, uh, eight in the main, one in the natural. That is going to allow them to remax pretty quickly, uh, but Zoz, unfortunately, is still behind in supply. Tai 2 with a superior army right now, and this is a lot of lurkers going under the swarm. And look at the lurkers, they are completely immune to the Archon fire. And this fourth base may go down. To, uh, Zaz is going to try and get on top of the lurkers. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be very difficult to come back if he loses this fourth base. A lot of the probes actually going down to these lurkers. 11 kills, 12 kills, 13 kills on that lurker. 5 on the other one. 14 kills, 15 kills. This is such a huge amount of probes to lose for Zaz. And Zoss is going to find it very hard to remax, and he cannot, and GG is called. And Tai 2 will regain a little bit of pride for the Foreign Brood War team. Nicely played there by Tai 2. Can't really fault his play at all. His early, uh, early sort of aggression with the Lings didn't really make too much sense. There is one thing I want to do. Uh, I'm actually just going to head back to the beginning of the replay, just so we can see... If he did see the forge in that area, because it's... Okay, so this is a little bit too late. But wait, the Overlord definitely sees it here, so... Oh, I think this was... Wait. Maybe he thought he could take down the forge without the cannon attacking it. That's the only thing I can think of. Right, so this is when the Overlord's first coming in. Let's actually speed this up a little bit. Okay. So unless he didn't think it was tight, uh, not too sure, but... Unfortunately, the uh, nine pull didn't work, but it didn't really matter because Tai Two did end up winning the game anyway. I'm just gonna report that game. We're gonna have a look at the results. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to. Well, I can probably show off the overlay, but it's gonna take a little bit to set up, so there's no real point in terms of um, in terms of showing what the next matches are. I'll just tell you what they are because I had a look before. Uh, I had it all set up, but I had to reload everything uh, just to get the scores back to the way they should be. But really nice win for Tai 2. Of course, that is an overall win for Clan Revolution. So really, really nicely done by them. Let's actually just bring up the results screen. Just to have a look, uh, we'll see exactly what went on throughout the series. That's actually me. We want this one. There we go. So as you can see, Care Bear taking a really nice TVC win versus Hermu. Incomplete, taking a good uh, PvZ win against Faust. Non winning a TVC against uh, Alan. And Tai 2 taking back a little bit of pride for Foreign Brood Rural Stars against Zaz in that fantastic CVP we just saw. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed everything that's been going on today. I don't know how uh, loud everything is. Um, 
Hopefully all the audio is all fine and dandy and everything. Uh, once again, I'm just going to quickly bring the chat over here, show my face just a moment, uh, just so I can talk through a few little things. So uh, as you can see by the area next to me, uh, there is going to be... Okay, I'm pointing the wrong way. There's going to be another cast on Friday that's going to be at the same time, 2100 CEST, which is Central European Savings Time. Uh, going to be a lot of fun. The games we are going to see there, let me just actually bring this over, because uh, I did have this open on another window just to make sure I didn't lose it, and apparently I closed that window, so let's just quickly go back, and we can just announce what games are going to be coming up next. Of course, after these games, we are going to be moving on to uh, week four, uh, but to round off week three on Friday, we're going to have Net Wars versus Team Liquid staff on um, Group A, and we're going to have Soul versus Ash in Group B. They should be very, very fun matches. Hopefully, we won't have any walkovers there. I know we had a walkover today. But overall, the series were pretty good. Uh, as I said before as well, all of the... Um all of the things will be, all of the VODs will be going up tomorrow. I'm going to highlight all the cast from today and yesterday. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in. If you did enjoy what you saw, please do follow. And please do use the Matrino code that is in going to be in the chat in just a second. Uh, basically, you don't have to pay anything. Um, uh, by the way, I just want to apologize for the static. Um, unfortunately... I don't know how to fix it. It's to do with the fact my moving background is done by a video, it's not a video capture device, it's called a VLC video source. And I've been Googling around for ages, I've been messing with so many settings to try and fix it. And not donate, sorry, it's Matarino. Uh, basically, you'll get a free code. If you put that code in, you can donate a Dollar to the price will courtesy of Matarino, so you don't have to pay anything. So don't think I'm trying to make you spend money on the tournament or anything. I would never do that. Uh, just a quick shout out as well to the people who have donated with their hard-earned cash. Uh, thank you once again to Caspas with the $500 donation on the $1 code. Uh, Marky Mark with the $50 donation. Grey Shades with the $30 donation. Hermu with the $20 donation. And Camchak with the $10 donation. That plus the codes that have been used so far has put our price pool to $652.50. Uh, thank you very much to everyone supporting the tournament, of course. Thank you to everyone once again for tuning in. Thank you for all the players for playing their games and being such good sports about it as well. i not had any problems for any of the teams yet, so it's been a pleasure to run this and cast this. So I am going to find someone else to host. The one other thing I want to do is just make sure you guys are aware uh, there's a lot of events coming up over the next week or so. Let me just actually do events all just so I can uh, say what they are. Uh, basically, you're going to have the Pylon Show. That's going to be two, uh, uh, two and a half hours away. That's going to be In Control and Artosis um, podcast. Basically, it's going to be a mix of StarCraft 2 and Brood War content. So do tune in. Their stories are really funny. Uh, KCM Race Survival tomorrow, 12 hours from now. That's going to be a lot of fun as well. Uh, the Shinhan Tank Pro League, of course, back in a day and two and two hours. No, a day and 21 hours. Sorry, I'm having a break tomorrow. Uh, BSL on Saturday. That's going to be hosted by Zero. Going to be a lot of fun. Do tune into that. Africa Star League ASL is back on Sunday. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Do tune into that as well. And then going from there, Monday. Uh, Monday is going to be the Brood War Clan League Finals. So do tune into that. I'm going to make my cast on Tuesday next week uh, so I don't clash with that just because I want to make sure the views are going to all the right places. Finals should be supported as well and that should be a lot of fun. There's a lot of Brood War content coming your way, guys. There's Coach People League as well. Do tune into all of it if you can. Follow all the casters and stuff and just make people know that their work's appreciated. So thank you very much once again and I will see you guys on Friday. Have a good evening, guys. Have a good afternoon. Have a good morning and enjoy your Thursday, everyone. And I will see you soon.